Edwards has prowled BYU sideline. Now the dogs of Mississippi State are fresh on the scent of a Cougars team struggling to make Edwards last season special. Then Saturday, the SEC heats up. Tennessee looking for a volunteer at quarterback. But Alex Brown in Florida looking for Gator Bay. Rudy Johnson has helped Auburn restore the roar. Now Nick Saban's LSU Tigers look to earn their strike. Last week, the luck of the Irish ran out. They lost the war and their battle. Now they brace for Drew Brees. And the Bruins have already dampened Bama's season. Now they eye third-ranked Michigan. College football tonight, next. Well, hello there, and welcome as we continue the countdown in one of the more interesting, unique matchups in the college football season, Mississippi State at BYU. In the meantime, it's College Football Tonight, presented by Gateway. Chris Fowler, Rod Gilmore, Mike Gottfried. Are you still on a hiatus, Coach, for picking games? Can you talk uh, about that, Rod? For a month. <laughs> for a month. <laughs> not allowed to pick. All right, well, quarterback issues just... Overall, not an overwhelming start for the SEC, but it's still early, of course. Tonight, Mississippi State becomes the first SEC team to visit Provo. Bulldogs longest road trip in 20 years almost, but they get no sympathy from Lavelle Edwards. It's been a long punishing road in his final season at BYU and now a short week to get ready for Joe Lee Dunn and that posse. With more on the legacy that Lavelle will leave behind, we go out to Provo and our Dr. Jerry Punch. Doc, good evening. Well, good evening, Chris. Thank you very much. You know, uh, with, when the Cougars kick it off here tonight in their home opener, it will mark the beginning of the end for one of college football. You guys want to talk some smack? This is Fred Smoot. His website, Smoot Smack, all about talking trash. He reads the opposing media guide for inspiration. It is time for the Bulldogs and Cougars. Rod likes Mississippi State. If Mike were to pick, which is not going to because he's taking a hiatus, see, well, he thinks Mississippi awesome. State will play well. Play well. <laughs> Experienced quarterbacks have trouble with Joe Lee Dunn's wacky blitzing scheme. I just wonder about old Charlie Peterson for BYU. A lock on those corners. We'll be here at halftime as part of Sports Center in game. Is Provo ready for Pig Prather and Smoot Smack? Are they ready for Corso, Herb Street Punch, and Mike Tirico? Guys? All right, Chris, an unseasonably mild night for the BYU home opener. The first time Provo has welcomed an SEC team. <laughs> Jackie Sherrill's 10 years in Starkville have been defined by a simple formula he learned from the Bear. A physical attack that thrives on opportunity and emotion. After 29 years of All-Americas, bowl games, league and national titles, Lavelle Edwards is finally stepping down. The aerial attack that has defined Cougar Nation will be stiffly tested tonight. And 60,000 strong, they welcome the BYU Cougars in a tough spot and an important game. Mississippi State BYU kicks off from beautiful Provo in 60 seconds. Part of the landscape here in beautiful Utah includes on the BYU campus Cougar Stadium, the house that Lavelle built, the retiring BYU coach, his final home opener, but his team is trying to avoid a rare one and three start without two thirds of the starting backfield facing a tough and physical, nasty Mississippi State defense. Welcome to the start of the college football weekend. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, Jerry Punch on the sidelines in a second. Guys, we've seen it with our own eyes the last few years. Mississippi State's earned its reputation, one of the best defenses in the nation. Take them. A short week for BYU. Herbie, this is not the spot for a quarterback to get his first college start. No, it's not. You know, you think of BYU football over the years, you think of talented quarterbacks throwing the football all over the place. Well, this year, BYU has two talented quarterbacks. Sophomore Brett Engeman has taken most of the snaps in their first three games, but he's down with an ankle injury. So as Mike mentioned, Charlie Peterson will get his first collegiate start. He's a junior. He's had some reps. He's seen the field before. If you remember back in the opener against Florida State, Peterson got out there and saw a very good Florida State defense, so he has some experience. But tonight against Mississippi State. They will attack him and they will pressure him and confuse him quite a bit. It's going to be interesting to see how he sits back in that pocket and how he responds to all that pressure and intimidation. Intimidation, my friend. That's a key word when you describe Mississippi State's defense. They were ranked number one in the nation last year and you're not going to believe this, but they think they're even better for a couple of reasons. Number one, Joe Lee Dunn, the defensive coordinator, is back. He's one of the best. And they got a great defensive back in number two, Fred Smoot. The kid can play. He can play against anybody. The matchup I want to see today is Fred Smoot against number 14, Margin Hooks. They're great players. They can play, but they can talk, too. Dr. Punch, 
Mississippi State can play defense. The question is, do they have an offense? Exactly, Coach. And don't let their 17 points they scored in season opening win over Memphis fool you. Their offense, the Bulldog offense, generated just 127 total yards, just 45 of those on the ground. All it's from a coach, Jackie Sherrill, who prides himself on being able to run the football behind a massive offensive line. Now, the owners have changed the offensive fortunes tonight for Mississippi State along on the shoulders of junior quarterback Wayne Matkin, who's 16-6 record as a starter in the case he's quite a competitor. Now, in the offseason, Matkin bulked up, added 20 pounds and extra arm strength. So don't be surprised if Mackin and company try to test a very young BYU secondary over the top, very deep, early. Mike? Hey, Doc, that'll be something to watch for for sure. Look at that beautiful blue sky. We can't see a cloud for miles, and the temperature's over 90, so it will be warm, but it's a dry 90. It's not that humid out here. Should not affect either team this evening. In the shadows of the Wasatch Mountains, Owen Potchman, the senior from the state of Washington, will kick it off. For BYU at one and two, coming off an eight-point loss at Air Force on Saturday. The short turnaround for them, Mississippi State beat Memphis 17-3. They've been off for a dozen days. To an E goes Pink Prather. So Mississippi State will start the drive from its own 20. Led by the quarterback Jerry was talking about, Wayne Madkin. He has matured physically and mentally. Sitting down with him before the game yesterday, you can really sense that. The Axis starting lineups, in addition to Madkin, the three-year starter, Miller will share time with Dante Walker. Williamson's a blocker. Brindle has great speed, and Huntington has to play up to his senior expectations. These guys ran 55 plays in the first game, and only four of them went for over 10 yards. So Mississippi State's skilled players must step it up tonight. From the 20, Matkin gives to Miller. Scores forward for about three yards, tripped up by Josh Lowe, the strong side linebacker. Let's see the battle up front on the lines, starting with the offensive line for Mississippi State. Porkchop Womack's name gets a lot of attention. He may be one of the top tackles in the SEC. Lee, what about the defensive line they go up against? They got to go against Olsen Hoke up in the middle. They are the two strongest defensive players against the run in all the Mountain West. Very good players in the middle. And the NFL guys like 99, Satema Nali. After a four-yard pickup, it's another run with Miller trying to establish that early. For a couple of yards, Josh Lowe made the tackle. For third and four, let's peek at it. The back seven for BYU. Justin Enna has moved into the middle, and he is playing great. Around the ball all the time with Lowe and Kelly. But Herbie, an issue in the back line. Uh, it's been an issue throughout the first three games. Teams are having success throwing the football. Dustin Staley is a former safety. Jared Lee, you see, is the leader of the free safety. But both the corners have caused problems. And here in the passing down, let's see how they respond. A long three to pick up. Matkin and Mississippi State. We're not very good in these situations in week one. Option with Miller. First down. And it's still going. Vicenzo Miller knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line. 15 yards. Isaiah Joyner, the freshman, made the first hit, but it wasn't enough. You're going to see a number of backs in the Bulldogs' backfield. Vicenzo Miller is the leader because he does everything pretty well. Here he takes the pitch. Look at the effort here. As he sheds the tackle, stays in bounds, and picks up another 10 to 15 yards. That's outstanding effort, and that's something that this young offense, because of the way they struggled against Memphis, they need some first downs to get their confidence going. Wrap him up. Yeah, bump him there. You got to bring him down. Back in first time for the air tonight. Being chased by Denny. Gets a couple of yards. Gets out of bounds. Isaiah Kelly, the linebacker for BYU, took a shot. Well, Mississippi State running the ball against Memphis in week one. Now, Memphis has a very good defense. A lot of starters returning. They didn't know what they were going to get from a new defensive coordinator. Still in all, if you're an SEC team, 35 for 45 ain't going to get it done very long. But the interesting thing, Mississippi State ran the option for the first time. They did not run the option very much against Memphis, and I think that's a great way to get outside against NYU. After picking up three, second and seven. Kenny Williamson, the fullback. Changed the count at the line. Nowhere to go up in there. Chris Hoke, the senior from Santa Ana, California. The man Lee talked about in the lineups made the play.
Mike, one of the things that they're going to have to be careful of, Sparky Woods as an offensive coordinator, at times a little bit conservative because he has such good defense. We talked about this a lot in meetings, about how at times they rely on the defense, but they have to be careful of putting themselves in third and long and obvious passing downs. The last time they had that situation, they ran some kind of an option. Not a bad play. They bring Miller out here to the near side, and he's watched by the free safety, Jared Lee. Flag is down. Intended for Williamson, the fullback. It's incomplete as it was deflected. Let's check the flag. Thrown at the line of scrimmage. Ryan Denny with the pressure got an arm up to bat it away. SEC officials here in tonight's game. Our referee is Steve Landis. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. It'll be third and one. Talked about the third down conversion problems against Memphis. Two of 14, but they're one of one so far tonight. And they're going to have third and less than a yard here. The Bear probably thought Jackie Sherrill the same thing I know. Less than a yard, you go quarterback sneak. The reason why it works, because your center knows the snap count and the opponents don't. Got their jumbo set in with some big backs. Run the second tailback, Dante Walker, who goes through the opening and into BYU territory for Mississippi State first down. Walker, the sophomore out of Clinton, Mississippi. Nice push up front. Tommy Watson, the right guard, number 66, comes off the block. Number 32, Kenny Williamson, does a great job of lead blocking. The second thing the Bear taught him, if you don't run a quarterback <laughs> sneak, how many times I said, have a lead blocker. Oh, Correct? yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Right. 32. Kenny Williamson was the lead blocker, and that number 66, Watson, did a nice job up front. Clarence Parker is at the top of the screen. He has to catch a pass for Mississippi State. He's in motion. Matkins looking his way, but comes down to Justin Griffin. And the third tailback, who can also play a little bit of fullback, takes it down to the 30, 15 yards of the first down. Nice opening drive here for Mississippi State. It's a great call here by Sparky Woods. They picked, they've already picked up two first downs. Now it's first and ten. If you go by the scouting report, everybody's thinking run. Great job by Wayne Madkin. Seeing Griffith on the outside, throwing it out in the flat. you got to remember, Justin Griffith last year had 44 catches. Kind of the ultra back for Mississippi State. Can run the ball, can catch, and can block at fullback. But a great call by Sparky Woods. Justin Jenkins in motion. And the red shirt freshman has it over. Roger loses the tackle. And uses the speed to get to the 15-yard line. So Mississippi State changing it up a little bit. Some screens, a reverse. That time, 16 yards. Justin Jackson, this the reason why this play works so well. They've been establishing the plays inside, inside, inside. There's the fake to number 12, Miller. And now Jensen comes to the outside. The reason why that worked, Kirk, is they kept running the ball inside. Now they come to the outside. Yep, and it's going against all their characteristics. They're, they're going against the norm of the scouting report. And it's a play action passes and a reverse on first and ten. In the red zone, Mississippi State. Desenzo Miller with an opening. Touchdown. Some sloppy BYU tackling the entire drive. And Lavelle Edwards watches Mississippi State walk right down the field for the opening score. For an offense whose longest drive in the first game was 25 yards, they take it 80. First time they touch the ball. We have two outstanding kickers in the game tonight, both seniors. Mississippi State's Scott Westerfield made two game-winning field goals last year. Bangs home the extra point. And the Bulldogs lead by seven. Well, last week, Mississippi State had 127 yards of total offense against Memphis. Here, they take the opening drive, go 80 yards in nine plays for the opening touchdown. 7-0 Mississippi State lead via the nine-play 80-yard drive. Desenzo Miller, the touchdown maker. BYU fans will now try to encourage their offense. And new quarterback, Charlie Peterson, down 7-0. Kirk said pressure. Pressure because it's your first start. I'm nervous for him. And then the real pressure. <laughs> 
<laughs> from the dog defense. Oh, yeah. They've got a great kickoff man, John Michael Marlin. 5'8 freshman out of Tupelo. He's got a little cannon on that leg. Didn't kick it all the way back through the end zone, and Paul Peterson a return to the 17-yard line. The speed of the game will change right now because of what Mississippi State does on defense. Here's Charlie Peterson, his last start, Utah's Bingham High School, 1994. The other 10 with him on the BYU offense, the Axel lineups include McDonald, an inside runner who starts with the injured Luke Staley. Wide receiver, Margin Hooks, NFL skills, Jonathan Pittman, over 17 and a half per catch in his career. Zavita Opahingawe is a good tight end in the middle of the field, about 15 yards from the line of scrimmage and in. Already, they're trying to confuse Peterson. It goes up top. Oh, almost caught. Marcus Whalen, the freshman reserve tailback, just a step away from a big completion. Wow, that would have calmed him down quick. What a great call here. Sliding Whalen out of the backfield. You can see him lined up. He's going to slide out. Linebacker loses him. He's trying to get back. But as they fake the reverse, Dick Prather got completely lost, and Whalen so close. But a good, good start there. I love the call there for the quarterback. Try to put them back on their heels as often as possible. Second and ten. Peterson screen is receiver, the intended receiver. Brian McDonald got knocked down. It will be third down. We're trying to protect. Peterson tonight is an offensive line who's seen their weight kept under 300 pounds to keep him quick. Reichert and Archibald, two sophomore tackles, have good potential down the line, and they're going up against a good front four, Lee. Jackie Sherrill told us that he thought that all four of these players would be played at a National Football League. Dorsett Davis, first rounder. That's right. Can play. Well, we said Willie Blade also is another guy to keep an eye on, number 54. Willie's problem is he plays half the time and right. sleeps half the time. Got to get the big fella's motor going every Ooh. play. The senior, 6'2 and 3'16, ready to go after the quarterback. They bring five, and Peterson's on the move. Help from McDonald is back. There's nowhere to run. Mario Hagan made the play. They're going to kick it away on fourth down. Hagan, who had an unbelievable 17 tackle performance, adds to it there. And then when you get to the secondary, Kirk, five tough defenders. Well, this is what makes the defensive backfield, actually the entire defense of Joe Lee done great. Fred Smoot, number two, you want to keep an eye on him. Possibly the best cover corner in college football. And number 47 is Josh Morgan. They say really is the leader and the quarterback of that secondary. Make sure they're in the right place at the right time. And Aaron Edmonds going to feel some pressure on this kick. Gets it away quick. Nice driving to Senzo Miller back to the 22. Has room to run because of the deep kick. BYU finally down there in coverage at the 38-yard line. Big leg out of the puncher. Mike Nelson made the tackle. The kick was 61 yards. Lee and Kirk are off to join Chris in the land of the Big Orange for college game day presented by Discover Card. Our primetime game is a good one in the SEC. The Battle of the Tigers, unbeaten LSU and Auburn. Our noon game, Steve Levy, Dave Bryan, and Todd Christensen will bring you Cal taking on undefeated Illinois. And we mentioned Todd, not because he's a BYU guy, but also because his son is on the sidelines of BYU, Toby Christensen, who we will see later tonight, a freshman, whose dad works with us. First down for Madkin and the Dogs. Incomplete. Too high for Justin Griffin. Well, Kirk, we talked to Wayne Madkin yesterday, all four of us, Jerry Punch, myself, Lee and Kirk, and we have talked to Wayne a few times when we see Mississippi State on Thursday Night Football. He looked different, he spoke different, he acted different. I was impressed with the maturity from November to September. I think it's because of all the things he's been through, the adversity, and not to mention physically, he's a much, he almost looks like a tight end, he's so much bigger. Run some option with Dante Walker. The sophomore is hit forward. 
The first hit was by Brett Kiesel, the junior from Wyoming. Whenever you have a, a quarterback that's an average passer, this is the best play in football. You get the ball to the outside. Now, as you watch Madkin come down the line of scrimmage, what I like here, he flips the ball with his left hand. You see that, Kirk? Yeah. That takes practice. I really like the quarterback that flipped the ball. You see his finger go down. The reason why that's a good play, he flipped it with his finger down. Brought the thumb straight down. Yes. Here is third and three. You see where they have to go. The ESPN first and ten line. All the motion this way. Madkin throws on the run for a first down. The 40-yard line. Darrell Grindle, the sophomore from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, picked up 14. Mississippi State is doing it on the money down, third down. They've been successful here early in the game. Grindle is going to sit in this against the zone. Joyner's going to play him soft. And Wayne Matthew feels very comfortable, but a good job there of Grindle sitting in the pocket, coming right back to the football. And Wayne Matthew delivered an absolute strike right on the money there for the first down. Clarence Parker, the out inside receiver, went to the outside and took the outside guy back. That's why he was open to the inside. Mississippi State leading and driving. For Justin Griffin. Overthrown. Coverage on the play by Josh Lowe, the senior from Mesa, Arizona. Is this the same offense that we've watched? <laughs> Not the one I watched play Memphis. I watched that tape this afternoon. That was brutal. Well, two things. Number one, I like the fact that Sparky Woods is going against sure. his computer scouting. Sure. They're running the same plays on first and ten that they ran last week. The difference is Sparky's throwing it off of them. Good strategy, Mike Tirico. Sparky was the head coach of South Carolina from 89 to 93. Courtney credit for a tackle there. BYU cleaned him up. Another third down coming up. That was a, right here with that, that safety blitzing. You can see Matt gets ready to deliver the football, but the receiver, Clarence Parker, did not sight adjust off of the blitz. Therefore, Wayne Mackin, he had nothing to do but to eat the ball. That's a tackle on number 74, Courtney Lee. 6'4", 346 pound left guard. BYU showing some pressure again. They rush four. Mack and elusive. Now some space to throw. Incomplete. Trying to come back for his tight end, Donald Lee, who found an opening, but Wayne couldn't put on the brakes and throw. It will be fourth down. That was an unbelievable turn of events for BYU. If they would have allowed Mississippi State to drive that ball and go ahead 14-0, I promise you this has been over. As tired as they are from this oh, 43 yeah. days, that was a great defensive stop by BYU. Very important psychologically. Great job by the front there, getting some pressure on Madkin. Prentice Cole hunted for the first time in his college career against Memphis and did a very good job. This one's going to go through the end zone. Almost went through the goalpost. Time is out in Provo. BYU, new quarterback, tough defense. They get the ball again next. One of the most picturesque settings in all of college football, Cougar Stadium. They've averaged over 60,000 every year since they expanded it back in 1982. We're out of over 60,000 here tonight. Charlie Peterson's second drive from the 20. First run of the night. Brian McDonald gets the yard. And nothing more. Guys, I realize that the BYU didn't uh, didn't move the football very much in the first offensive possession, but Robbie Bosco was an excellent teacher. When, when Charlie Peterson came off of the sidelines, a quarterback coach here who won a national title at BYU said, I don't care about what we did. Tell me what you saw. I want to know what you saw. I know you didn't have time to throw the football, but did you see what you had to see? So they went through the progressions of looking for receivers and what he saw downfield. An important part was that Charlie saw what he should have seen. He said, we'll give you some protection and you get the ball off. As long as you see what you got to see, we'll be okay later on. Bosco, the 84 national champion quarterback, the 13-0 Cougar team. Peterson throw to the tight end, Doug Charlie, who takes it to the 25. It was the sophomore, Josh Morgan, who's a free safety who brought him out of bounds. Third and five coming up. Jolly five catches on the season. 
This kid Morgan's a smart sophomore. Very smart. He makes sure everybody's in the right spot. Former quarterback in high school. But talking to the players and talking to Joe Lee Dunn, it's interesting the way these players are committed to knowing their opponent and studying film and knowing the tendencies of each player, not just the offense, but each player. And that's why they're able to confuse these offenses and do so many things. See the movement before the snap? Five coming on third and five, and a first down toss to Martin Hooks. Across the 30-yard line. First first down of the night for the Cougars. I like what they have done now, BYU. The fact that they've gone to the five-step drop and getting the ball out of Charlie's hands quicker before the defensive men could get to him. The reason why they've completed two passes in a row, watch, sitting right here, one, two, three, boom. Get out of it, get rid of the ball, and Kirk against a great defensive line, that's exactly what you do all the time. That's what the BYU system is all about. They love man coverage, but they've got to get rid of the ball quickly. After Hooks extends his consecutive game with a catch streak to 28, Kalani Sataki, the fullback, moves it to the 35, a pickup of five yards on the play. Sataki carried it seven times this year, had some effective runs in the second half comeback at Virginia. All the Wahoo pomp and circumstance, the redone Scott Stadium opened up. Crowd of over 60,000. BYU fell behind 21 to nothing at the half, came back, forced overtime, and beat Virginia 38 35 for their lone victory. The loss was the opening game the Pigskin Classic played on a quote neutral turf, unquote, losing to Florida State and Jacksonville 29 to 3. Peterson second and five. Nobody open. Finally finds Van Horton for a first down. That's a tough throw and uh, make many of those tonight. And we're going to see one of those go back the other way. First down. Lee, I know what you're thinking here. Quarterbacks never throw back against their body like this, especially against a talented defense that can fly. As he comes here, he gets to the outside. He sees Horton sitting back in there. And that is very very dangerous and a lot of times coaches will go crazy even though he completes that congratulations don't ever do it again exactly <laughs> that's what he'll get on the film that's what he gets in the that's film exactly. on Monday. he gets it on the side as soon as he comes over and sees me message from the coach and from ben horton too two first downs in this drive hello nate with some room to run seven yards across midfield into the 48. Jason Clark was salivating, and the freshman came up to join two other Bulldog defenders on the tackle. Well, Peterson starting because of the injury to that man, Brett Engelman, the sophomore who grew up right here in Provo, was living his lifelong dream to be the BYU quarterback. He injured an ankle, can't even pinpoint the play that had happened in the Air Force game last week. Played through the second half, but a high ankle sprain is keeping him out tonight. They hope to get him back for the next game against UNLV in nine days. So Robbie Bosco, the quarterback coach, has to coach Peterson through this one. McDonald bounces to the outside. First down to the 37 for the junior college transfer. We talked about having Brian McDowell run to the inside, and for no other reason to keep that pass rush back but here's a great idea he bounces to the outside what i like about this kirk more than anything roll out to the right quick step by the quarterback bootleg and now a quick run nice play calling to keep that mississippi state defense off the line. play eight of the drive will be a first down into the shotgun and a half dozen bulldogs in time for peterson Hooks and Smoot. And the pass goes incomplete. Margin Hooks and Fred Smoot were looking forward to seeing each other, as Lee told you at the very top of the broadcast. Two people who enjoy conversation. We asked Fred Smoot yesterday in our meeting with him if he's ever been beaten in practice, and he's paused for a while, and he said, I think one time, and they threw a big party, and then that next play we brought it. He doesn't get beat very often. He has probably some of the best man-to-man -man covering ability of any cornerback in the country, and he was looking forward to going up against Hooks one-on-one. -on, -one. on Mel Kuyper's draft board on ESPN.com, Smoot is listed as number nine in the country in terms of seniors for the NFL draft next year. Peterson throws to Kalani Sataki, who wins the tackle. First down, Cougars at the 23. Nice kick by Kalani 
Sitake. Born in Tonga, his first name means gift from heaven. When translated, we'll check the marker. Because of the pressure, they're going to slide him out of the backfield right here. The linebacker can't get over in time to make the play. And he, Fred Smoot, who's grading man-to-man -man covering ability, but there misses a tackle. Sitaki's a big man to bring down. Breaks a couple tackles and picks up big yards. Coming back. Coming back for an illegal shift. What happens on that legal ship, Mike and Kirk, is the team will move around and two people are moving at the same time. Everybody must be stopped for one full second before the ball is snapped. That's why that play was called back. You know why they got that move in? Because the old swinging gate, New Rocket, used to have the formation where they all started in motion, snapped the ball, and went around the end. You learned something. New Rocket is why that rule's in. Thank you. It's good that you can cross generations for us. Though. Very helpful. Mike Fergell was the move man, and McDonald on second and long. And make it third and ten. Well, tomorrow night, a special Friday night pennant edition of ESPN's Major League Baseball. The Cleveland Indians in a wild card battle, atop of it right now in the American League, take on Derek Jeter and the Yankees, who are cruising into the postseason. You'll see it after Sports Center tomorrow. Dave Burba against David Cohn. The Indians in the wild card now, a game and a half up on Oakland, three up on the Boston Red Sox. But the Indians are trailing Pedro Martinez and the Red Sox, three nothing right now. See the Indians and Yankees tomorrow night. Third and about ten. Peterson being chased by Yuki Clinton, intercepted by Josh Morgan, the sophomore safety. Trying to throw it on the run, but Morgan comes up with the pick. The pressure by fellow DB Eugene Clinton. Another turnover for BYU. Their 11th of the year. And Jolie Dunn's team gets it back to the O. A little oxy oxygen for Josh Morgan. And the Bulldogs up here at 4,500 feet of elevation. Something new for the guys from Mississippi. Morgan comes up with the INT. Gets the ball back for Wayne Madkin in the offense. Leading 7-0, late first quarter. Dante Walker, the tailback. Williams in the fullback. It's Walker to the left. Isaac Kelly forced him outside. And the quarterback, Danny Phillips, made the tackle. Go back to that interception. Charlie Peterson's had some success running and moving around in the pocket. Here, as he's rolling to the right, I want you to look at the free safety, Josh Morgan who's basically going to come over here and bait Peterson to throw the football. Waiting, waiting, comes up, makes the interception. That's a 14th straight game. The Bulldogs have had a pick. Bait or no bait? Five plays ago, I said, don't throw the ball across your body because there's more defenders on the inside. That was a mistake that a quarterback made because he had success before. On second and six, BYU did jump back. Pass out to the near side. Just shy of a first down, or maybe is a first down for Brandon Butler, the third string quarterback, a sophomore out of Kenner, Louisiana. They're going to pick up the first down with the mark out to the 39 yard line. Pulling out all the plays tonight, aren't they? from Mississippi State at its own 39. Already picked up seven first downs in the game. Matkin looking for his tailback to Senzo Miller. We've seen the tailback split out as a receiver a couple of times. Downstairs to Jerry. Guys, you mentioned we talked to Wayne Madkin yesterday at the hotel a little while. He said, you know, when I came in my fourth game of the year as a redshirt sophomore against South Carolina, everything was a blur. It's like someone taking a real cheap camera and taking a picture. It was moving when they take the photograph, and it was all blurry. Now that I've had the chance to learn the offense, every play is a Kodak moment. That every play is sharp and crisp and clear. I see what's going to happen before it happens, and it helps me so much to understand where I should throw the football long before I have to release it. Third-year juniors survived the tough days, too. 16-6, and six, as we said. It's a pretty good starting record in the SEC. He'll keep it. Get a first down and much more. Open field. No BYU defenders back. And Mackin takes it all the way. Out of bounds at the five. Now they're going to mark him at the seven now. But that's still 54 yards for Wayne Matkin. 
And Josh Lowe is injured for BYU. Doctors talked about it. We've talked about it earlier, how he's matured and developed, not only mentally but physically. And here, you can see the confidence. Once he cuts up field, right there, his eyes open up, and he says, I, I might be able to take this to the house. And look at the breakaway speed for a man that's 6'4", 227 pounds. They were lucky to get him out of bounds. One of the things that Jackie Sherrill told us, he told us, told Wayne this year, if the guy's not open, run. Go, baby, go. And he's fast enough now. Look at that speed right there. The one thing I like about this kid is he came up big last year, and he was the offensive player of the game in a Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl and had a great offensive game. Now, being that game, a little plug, plug for Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, the Chick reason why he's so good now is more confident. Sure. I mean, that success breeds success. Remember last year at times when they would get into obvious passing downs, they would bring Wyatt into the game because it was something where they didn't just feel, they didn't feel confident in his ability necessarily. And then last year in the Egg Bowl against Ole Miss, and then... Of course, as Coach just mentioned, in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, he was able to pick up a lot of confidence in the offseason getting ready for this year. Well, Josh Lowe being helped off for BYU. They're thin at linebacker to begin with. Lowe's a very good player. Started nine games at the weak side linebacker spot. Moved to the strong side linebacker position this year. Young man who did his Church of Latter-day Saints mission in Siberia. Taken off with the injury. Mississippi State looking to go up two scores. Griffith inside. BYU pops the pass and about the side. Jared Lee with the big hit. Some hand fighting downfield. Larry Huntington lost his lid. Lee talked about how important this is for BYU. In talking to the BYU staff and players, they all talk about how tired they were and how tough the schedule is. Four games in 19 days, it's brutal. But the more you talk about it, the tougher it is mentally. It's going to be physically tough against a pounding team from the SEC. But BYU wasn't helping itself on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. Desenzo Miller to the four. Big third down coming up. This is a perfect situation. If you don't run that play action pass and run the quarterback, Wade Matkin to the outside, Kurt, and let him have a chance to run the throw. I've always liked that as my favorite play to give the quarterback two things to do down here. Especially when you have an athletic quarterback who's, who's a strong man who can get out there and, and do so many different things. And surprise, since first two plays with nine and ten guys stacked inside, they've still tried to play power football. The reason they call it is they scored in that play the first time. Here they got him spread out with three receivers. Justin Griffith, the lone back. Desenzo Miller, the tailback, is the receiver at the bottom of the screen. He's looking that way. Now in trouble. And brought down. Justin Enna, the linebacker. They perhaps called that an incomplete pass. BYU comes with a full blitz at Minnesota. The reason why I don't like that call, I'm not second guessing, I'm first guessing, is you drop back and the, you get all the linemen to put, put the pressure on him. The reason why that is not intentional grounding is because he was outside the pocket. But they did call it an incomplete pass. So it is uh, five yards closer for Westerfield's field goal. Not that the chip shot range would matter that much for one of the best kickers in the nation. This will be officially 22 yards for Scott. Susan Miller, the tailback, holds for him. And Westerfield with an extra point size field goal. Has now made one in six consecutive games. And Mississippi State's on top 10 to nothing. Bell Edwards offense can try to put some points on the board and they get the ball back. Waiting minutes of this first quarter. We'll log on to ESPN.com here during the first half and have a chance not only to see, but also vote for the hidden video play of the week. And we'll show you all the plays at halftime. Central Florida against Northwestern State. Dwight Collins, the hearing impaired running back, caught a pass off of a receiver reverse. 
How about Miami of Ohio? Two punt returns after not having a punt return for touchdown in 283 games. And the punter for Michigan State, Craig Jarrett, did a pretty good job getting physical with the Marshall guys. You'll see them at halftime or on ESPN.com. You have a chance to log in and vote. And we'll tell you which is the hidden video play of the week in the fourth quarter. Fabulous view of the Wasatch Mountains. And the Mississippi State guys taking that oxygen, something they practiced last night at the walkthrough because so many of the players had never had to take oxygen before during a game. Again, our elevation here, 4,500 feet. One of the reasons that after practice and after classes also on Tuesday, Jackie Sherrill brought his team out late Tuesday night as opposed to Wednesday morning. The return for Peterson. Paul Peterson across the 30s. Out of bounds at the 35 and 15 more with a late hit flag. BYU will have at it from midfield. Fifteen more. And clearly, calls. He was had a foot on the white line, the sidelines. Boy, BYU's got to be concerned. This is the worst possible scenario. Fall behind anybody by ten, but especially these guys. They're so quick on defense. But I think the impressive thing for me is I think Sparky Woods has done a good job of self-scouting. What he's done, they're faking the same plays they used against Memphis last week and throwing the ball off it. What I think is a great idea. I think the play calling on both sides, really, they're helping Charlie Peterson on BYU's side and throwing and moving him around a little bit. They've made some silly mistakes. Sparky Woods so oh. far has, has called an outstanding Excellent. game through his first quarter and giving his offense a chance to succeed. After getting a lot of criticism for the offense last week that was mostly stagnant, and only picked up 127 yards, but people don't realize that Memphis has a very good defense. Tommy West, new coordinator there, gave him some different looks. First down throw is incomplete over the head of Margin Hooks, who was blanketed by Eugene Clinton, who has a greeting for a fellow number 14. See, what you lose in Ingerman with the big arm, he has an NFL-type arm, you pick up with Peterson's feet. I mean, I know he's made some mistakes getting outside the pocket, but he is, he's more athletic, and he's able to create and move around and do some things. This young man, they talk about having a big-time future, not only here, but at the next level, maybe in the NFL. When you talk about Charlie Pittman, I mean, Peterson, excuse me, one thing you've got to remember, he's a second-team quarterback. Sideline warning against BYU. They're SEC officials, and these are the little things that the SEC officials use to police the game on a regular basis within the conference that maybe the Mountain West officials don't do as often. It's not that one group's right or wrong. It's just standard operating procedure for SEC teams and a little different for BYU to deal with here tonight. The SEC officials do a great job. As good a group as you'll see in the nation. Look out! Peterson brought down by Pink Craven. Those five defensive backs, three of them come and bring some heat quite often, and Prather's one of them. And the cowbells have come to Cougar country. Here, here, right here, freezer right here. Look at how many guys at the line of scrimmage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Mississippi State defensive linemen. Linebackers up. This is the confusion we talked about. And when you're a young quarterback and you see eight or nine guys walked up, you know they're going to come, but which way are they going to come from? That's also on BYU's offensive line. That is a lot of pressure on this BYU offense. And that's what Joe Lee done. That's what, his, that's what his defensive philosophy is all about, pressure and confusion. You have to get a playoff just before the play clock ends. Guts to put it up in the air, and it's incomplete. The pressure again for the flag is now thrown very late as there's pushing and shoving amongst the linemen. More than pushing and shoving. Some haymakers thrown in there as well. Willie Blade ended up on his back. The pressure came from the same side and the same guy. 29, Pig Prather. The half cannot, the quarter cannot end on an offensive or defensive foul. is who pushed too much farther after the whistle was blown. After the play was over, it was a personal foul against the defense. 15 yard penalty, an automatic first down. Uh, it's a big break for BYU to end the quarter here. Now, march him into.
to Mississippi State territory at the Bulldogs 40. That's the end of the quarter. And that brings the first 15 minutes to a close. Look at the rushing yards. 129 from a team that barely gained that much in total yardage last week. They only had 127 against Memphis. Led on the ground by the touchdown run. First from Desenzo Miller and then Wayne Matkins. Long run to set up the field goal. Bulldogs by 10 after one. Mississippi State leads 10-0. They had only seven first downs in their last game. They had eight in the first quarter. They had only 127 yards in their first game against Memphis, 164 in the opening quarter against the Cougar team, playing on a short week and tired. They have the ball in Mississippi State territory. The quarter ended after the dead ball foul. So out of the gun on first down. Peterson has his pass deflected and incomplete. Jerry Punch spoke with Lavelle Edwards at the end of the first quarter. Coach, a very physical first quarter. Got to be pleased with the poise of your very inexperienced quarterback, Charlie Peterson. He is. He's, he's doing all right, really. And uh, you know, we had two unfortunate penalties. I mean, it just killed us. We had him stopped on the first drive, and number nine lines up offsides. You know, it's just unbelievable. And we stop him on that down, and then we made a great play to get down inside the 20 and we and one of our wide receivers was in motion and those two plays uh, made all the difference uh, otherwise we're, we're hanging in there pretty good right now we just got to get something going off total offense before that 39-yard touchdown pass. Owen Hutchman on for the extra point. First career touchdown pass for Charlie Peterson. Three-point game. Charlie Peterson leading the five play 48 yard drive kept alive by the dead ball personal foul after BYU had been stopped on third down Mississippi State penalties have been over the last couple of years a problem for the Bulldogs and here two different penalties 32 yards of flags extend the drive and allow the touchdown to be scored Pick Prather back for Owen Potchman's kick hard to handle one takes a bounce and is finally fielded by Dante Walker. Cut down at 25, Ned Stearns made the tackle. Ned Stearns is getting married tomorrow. Heck of a bachelor party with 60,000 people here. Not bad. If you go back to the previous play, I think there was a little confusion in the secondary. Watch Pick Prather here communicating to Fred Smoot and the other secondary players because you don't want to have a free safety iso on one of the better receivers on the other side of the ball. And here, Josh Morgan, I know he's a good player, but he's trying to stay with Jonathan Pittman, and he can't do that. Now, the reason why that play works is the offensive line picks up the blitz. They give him enough time. They've been pressured and pressured. Finally, they gave him enough time, and he hit it. Nice Great shot. blocking by the offensive line was the reason why that was a touchdown play. Good job by the backs also to pick up the blitz. Madkin right to the air with time and delivers to his tight end. Donald Lee, 6'4 and 237 out of FIBA, Mississippi. Madkin throw, here's Jerry. Guys, BYU defensively has Paul Walkenhorst, a freshman, 6'5", 230-pound strong side linebacker in the game because Josh Lowe helped off the field a moment ago. Significant ligament damage in his right knee. He will not be back tonight. Probably have an MRI tomorrow to take a look at his MCL and ACL. Not good news for Josh. They've already lost Jeff Poultry, senior linebacker for the season with a knee injury for him as well. Turning the corner, Dante Walker. First down at the 43. Dante Walker on the carry. Eight yard pickup for the of the two tailbacks, the guy who's got the speed and the quickness. He just has to put it all together, stay healthy, and start doing some of the little things to get more playing time. 
if Dante Walker can become a complete back, and I'm talking about doing the little things when he doesn't have the football, picking up blitzes, blocking for other backs, he will be their feature back because he's a difference maker. He's got the speed to be that special kind of back. The reason why that play is working well is because BYU is getting everybody inside to stop the inside running play, and this is the state running a nice option to the outside. Out of the eye. Just a yard or so there. Walker. Here's the ball. I saw two hands. I didn't see the ball. BYU was tackling at it. It came out when he was down. See, we, we've seen a lot of option here in the first half from Mississippi State. One of the reasons you mentioned to get the ball to the outside where you can take advantage of your speed. The other thing is BYU is playing a lot of man coverage with their cornerbacks, and that's probably a play that they're pretty comfortable with. Receivers can simply run the, the cornerbacks off, and it gives the quarterback and the, and the running back a nice alley to pitch that ball and pick up some yards. The safeties have got to come from the inside out to stop that action play, exactly like Notre Dame did against Nebraska to stop their action last week. With some inexperienced receivers in, he's going to run here. Very elusive, much more than the first down. Now this is going to go. Wayne Madigan, touchdown. 56 yards. He's over 100. And we're only two minutes into the second quarter. That's down at the end where some of the Mississippi State fans are. The Bulldogs stay there to celebrate a little bit. This is an offense last week at 127 yards. We keep talking about that. You can see how comfortable he is right there as he makes the cut, picks up a block, and now the rest is just simply speed and athletic ability. Watch how he gets nice cut against the grain, picks up a block, and he, once again, for a big man, he has great breakaway speed. Scott Westerfield on. Took them 60 minutes to score 17 points against Memphis in the opener. 17 minutes to score 17 points tonight. Jackie Sherrill told us, and he told his quarterback, Wayne Madkin, look, if the guys are not wide open, you're a good runner and run the football. You can, you can run, you're big, you're strong, don't throw it away, run for touchdowns. Thank you, coach, good advice. off to a great start here at Provo. He's also been responsible for 10 points, the one he ran in and the field goal that he helped set up with a long run. Michael Marlin kick will be taken for a touchback. Paul Peterson. <laughs> this guy will be all fired up to sit down and watch some college football on ESPN2 on Saturday. A couple of teams ahead on our Thursday night schedule, Maryland and West Virginia. Meet Morgantown, a long-time border battle between IU and Kentucky. And then Southern Miss lost by three at Tennessee. How will they do at Alabama with Andrew Zhao now on the bench? ESPN2's college football triple header always includes Reese Davis, John Makovic, and Rod Gilmore in the studio. First down run for Brian McDonald. Prater made the play, and once again, Mississippi State's defense has been given a 10-point lead to work with. Joe Lee Dunn said he wouldn't take any other starting 11 in the country. And he might be a little biased there in his observation of his defense, but they fly to the football. They feel that they might be better this year than they were a year ago. The players were talking to us about two-a-days and how they do a pursuit drill. They do up-downs, they run to the ball, they do up-downs for 15 straight minutes. They said it's torture, but it makes them run to the football, and they're kind of committed to that. They really take a lot of pride in pursuit and flying to the football. Second and 11. That's not going to so quick and it both shows there that may have been their super sophomore Mario Hagen who knocked it away ninety eight Mario Hagen comes in and runs right over <laughs> Oh, Brian McDonald's a good runner, but I tell you, sweetheart, that guy ran right over him and caused the play to cause a touchdown again. The beautiful part about this football team is they're so quick, they're so fast, and they're so mean. That's they are. Good. They love it. They love it. They play together as a group, and Mario Hagan is going to be a superstar at the inside linebacker spot. 6'3", 250 pounds, and 
can fly. I mean, absolutely fly to the ball. Barry O'Hagan was a defensive end, but two years ago, he was a running back. He had averaged four yards per carry. That's the kind of an athlete he is. Two weeks ago when they played Memphis, he opened up as a starting linebacker. He had 17 tackles in his first career start, two sacks, caused a fumble. He had an interception, and he can go. Watch him come right through the middle and go right through McDonald. He brings the left arm through to deflect the ball, and Wims has the savvy to go pick it up and score the touchdown. You know what? We look, when I look at that again, I don't believe that Mario Higgins touched the ball. I think Charlie just got afraid. Watch her. Yeah, let's see it again. If you see it again, now, I don't think he hits the ball at all. I think he just gets back, and the ball comes loose without anybody hitting it. Watch it slow now. Watch it slow. I think the left arm comes through and hits it right there. Right there. Right there. Yeah, yep. you're right. I was huh? wrong. He does hit it. Sorry. That's, that's, a, heck, that's a heck of a play. One time. Boy, that was a big time play. Had some serious sleeve on a dress shirt to make a play like that. You know, last year on Thursday night, how many times did we watch Virginia Tech and Corey Moore and that defense and how they just yeah. used to really fly and get excited? The, the better they played, it seemed like the, the more pressure they put and the more they came together as a group. This defense reminds me of that same kind of attitude a year ago from Virginia Tech. John Michael Marlin's kick will be returned by Paul Peterson to the 27 yard line. Special teams covered by the backup safety, George White. And when you trail Mississippi State, the defense lets you know exactly where you stand, <laughs> physically and vocally. You got to believe number two, Fred Smoot, might have a few choice words for uh, Margin Hooks and company. There is Fred. There are some Smoot for Heisman bumper stickers circulating on vehicles in Starkville. Remember one thing about Mississippi State. This is not new. They've won 13 of the last 15 regular season games. The only streak that good was in 1942 and 44, where they won 13 straight. It's a good football team. Hooks on the bench for this play as they open up with two tight ends on this drive. And Brian McDonald carries for about four. And there is number two, Fred Smoot, in on the tackle. Unlike other corners who like to talk and cover and flash and show, and he's got all that, don't worry. He said, I like to be involved in run defense. I'm no Deion Sanders. I want to stick my head in and make a play. I was going to say, you see the number he's wearing? That's an honor of Deion Sanders and, and Charles, Woodson. Charles Woodson. And he said he is a lot like both Charles Woodson and Deion Sanders, yet he loves to come up, a lot like Woodson in college, come up and hit you. And he also likes to get in your ear and let you know about what he's doing to you. One thing he did not do that Woodson, those guys, did. he went to junior college for two years uh -huh. and got ready to play here. He's watching Mike Regal now. Peterson throws, that's deflected in the air, and caught by the tight end, Doug Jolly. yard line, they lost about four yards there. Number two's around the ball again. The thing I love about Fred Smoot here, he makes a play, but he takes trash talk into a different level. He said when he gets a scouting report, he studies the guy that he's going up against. He'll know the high school, his high school coach, who his girlfriend is by name, what his mom's name is, what his dad's name is. And he'll drop those bombs on the guy. He's checking and throughout the game. And, and you, know, I don't, you know, you just don't see guys do that kind of research. It's usually a guy's just going to kind of talk. He tries to get the opponent out of his game. Look at him watching the quarterback ready to back pedal with margin hooks. Lock him up. What a rush. He's in the pocket. That's a flag for intentional grabbing. The pressure came from Connor Stevens. The Bell Edwards offense has no answer. Mississippi State was ready for this game. They're proving it. Mitchell grounded by the offense. The penalty is the down count to spot the flag. Also down, fourth down. Well, we talked we talked to Jackie Sherrill, and he said that he thought all four of his defensive linemen could play in the National Football League. And here comes the full blitz, but the linemen continually are relentless. I talked to John Hedrick. The defensive line coach who's been there for six years who has had some great players like at Texas a &M. he says that all four of these guys can play in the National Football League. Willie Blade is probably the best if he plays hard all the time. Desenzo Miller ready for Aaron Edmonds who kicked at 61 last time. Like this rare air. 55 on that punt. Look out! 
Oh, flag is down as Miller's brought down at the 41-yard line. Penalty marker thrown about nine yards from where the line of scrimmage was. Return came back 32. Let's see if it stands. Absolutely. So it's the whole length of the kick plus the minus 10 from there. Forget that 32-yard return. We talked about the smooth for Heisman. Chat, it starts no preseason All-SEC, All-American. Even when the ball gets deflected and the tight end catches it on the other side of the field, number twos are there for the tackle. Surprisingly high scoring first 20 minutes of this game. Mississippi State 24, BYU 7. Jerry Punch on the sidelines, Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit. Thursday night football from the Mountain West. Matt get in trouble. Lost the football. And BYU has it. A flag is down. They're going to say that was a forward pass. That's interesting. There was a very long time between the referee saw it and then decided that it was a forward pass. It'll be grounding lost it down. Intentional grounding. There was a forward pass on the play. It's grounding because he was Kennedy in the pocket. Lost it down at the spot of the pass. And the ball didn't cross the line of scrimmage. That's why it's grounding. He was still in the pocket. I have to get it over the line. I, I think contact may have pushed this ball out. Let's mm -hmm. see if he gets hit from behind here. His arms coming oh. forward. You can't really tell from that angle, but he was under a lot of pressure there, and you got to wonder if. Kiesel, 93, didn't cause that fumble. He was thinking about throwing it, but I don't know if that's a throwing motion. Yeah. You know? Well, second and 15, it could have been a heck of a lot worse for Mississippi State. Throw on the move, gets the five yards back. Terrell Grindle, sophomore from Hattiesburg, Southern Miss country. I'd say, the state of Mississippi for football is is right up there with Southern Miss, Mississippi State, and of course the Rebels of Ole Miss. I'll give you a reason why. Not only good high school football, but sensational junior college football. Right. Guys come from all over the South to go to Mississippi Junior College so they can go on to major college football. That's why they're so good that's Great point, coach. Courtney Lee among the group. He just finished his junior college ball last year. to Desenzo Miller. Uses his speed to get the first down and more. What a run by Miller still going. She's at the 45 and the 40 and now he's gone. Oh. A spectacular touchdown for Desenzo Miller. 78 yards. thrown I think they're going to call Miller for excessive celebration with that dive in the end zone which sometimes is a correct call but in this case he was gassed and had somebody coming at him I think if that's the call here it's a mistake after the touchdown unsportsmanlike by the offense 15 yard penalty it will be marked off on the extra point now I'll have to dive in the end zone. Yeah, There's a little bit of mustard on it. I understand that, but Jeez. the guy just ran 110 Jeez. yards. And can't we can't we come up with some <laughs> other rules? Can't we spend our time with other rules? The guy goes 100 yards, you know, I mean, breaks 20 tackles, and he wants to dive, and we can't. This is a 35-yard extra point for Westerfield. 
31 7. I got a point to make here. I'm not so sure it was the dive as much as celebration as a celebration as a team. So not so fast, my friends. Okay. I think the dive uh, was the, in the penalty. The dive technically is supposed to be it's a It's been yeah. called in the yeah. SAC. Let me yeah. get to this play real quick. Yeah. Because Vicenzo Miller, this is third long, simply is going to do a flat route, flat route out into the, uh, the right side. You see the safety sliding over. I want you to look at the effort here, the lack of effort on the other side of the ball. He breaks three tackles right there, four tackles, five tackles. Look at the balance. I, you got to wonder where the rest of the BYU team is at this point. I mean, that's an outstanding effort by Miller. Look, he's got his hamstring taped. And at that point, it's gone. But he broke about six tackles before he got to midfield. Count them. He passed every defender for BYU, all of them. Where, just, where is BYU? Though? Just remember, from a coach's standpoint, and I've been in a situation, when you've got, you got a tired football team, the first thing that shows is tackle. lousy tackle. Right. And that's exactly. BYU, in this situation, it's unfair. They were supposed to have an opening week this week, and the conference put this ball game in because Air Force Put, oh, wanted an open week. Right. Hello, my friends. This is not fair to the BYU football program to force them to play this many games in this many days against this kind of football team. Period. Uh, an outstanding run by Miller. For the touchdown. And it's 31-7. Here's Jerry Punch. Incredible as you talk about how tired these football teams are. I mean, BYU has played three football games and traveled almost 7,000 miles, whereas Mississippi State's played one game. They traveled 157 miles from Starkville to Memphis to play up there. They were able to actually get back home early in the evening. So uh, quite a difference in football games and football teams. A very, very tired Brigham Young defense here on the BYU sideline. They put the oxygen on the Mississippi State sidelines. Miller the company needed after all the long runs they've been making thus far tonight. We'll talk about the scheduling thing momentarily because, gentlemen, we'll have a few moments to get into some issues here tonight. So, the flag is finally thrown. As Toby Galladay, the senior defensive lineman, came busting through. Was he enticed by a Cougar? For the snap, the defense violated the neutral zone, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, all day on ESPN.com, you've had the opportunity to leave a question for Lee or Kirk that we'd answer on the air. We call it QB mail and Lee mail. Ben in Lincoln, Nebraska wants to know, Lee, how tough is it for BYU to play with only four days rest? The score is 31-7, to seven, Ben. Next question. 31-7. <laughs> Hello. Boom! Contact made there, guys, and uh, now another flag is thrown. Not only fatigue, but preparation. You have a day or two to get out of the practice field and get ready for a tough defense and also an offense that has some ability, as we've seen tonight. So not, not only are they fatigued, but they're also, it, it's tough to prepare from a coaching standpoint to get this team ready. For the snap, the defense violated the neutral zone, five yard penalty, and that makes it a first down. From what I've seen, the guys in the white are much better than the guys in the blue. If you gave that blue coach Lavelle Edwards 10 weeks to get ready, he could never beat that football team in Mississippi State because Kirk, watching them, they're as good as Florida State on defense. Yep, they're at that, they're at that, level, at that level defensively. You're right. Florida State? That's the McDonald minus one. Pulled Mike, down by Connor Stevens, the linebacker. Mike, that's the book. That's the measuring stick in college football. Yeah, absolutely. the defense of Florida State, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. If you like Florida State, of course. this team is as good as anybody, including Florida State, on defense. This is a defense with every player over six foot. They have no small smurfs at corners. Smooth 6'1". They've got big guys up front. Their backers are 250 and 253. What's amazing is they say they're faster. They're faster than they were a year ago, and that's what made them so good. So they're bigger, and they're faster defensively. Spot for first down to the 41. That's Ben Horton. And an 11-yard catch against Florida State. A couple as far here tonight. And it's a first down for the Cougars. If you weren't with us earlier, let's go back and explain the BYU playing the short schedule here. It is their fourth game in 19 days. They played the pigskin classic against Florida State, the game at Virginia, a conference game this past Saturday at Air Force, and tonight's Thursday night game against Mississippi State. I'll break those down in a second for you. Davis is the throw. Trying to throw. And he's 
for the run. A marker is down in the secondary as Peterson gained 15. He crossed midfield before Pink Prather brought him down. Another penalty to sort out. We've already had nine in the game. Six against Mississippi State. Imagine what's going through Charlie Peterson's mind. He played against Florida State for about a quarter and a half or two quarters, and now he's seeing this defense. He must be thinking, man, college football is really fast. <laughs> Peterson and Engelman were so close that in the first game, the coaches decided to give each a quarter. Engelman the first, Peterson the second. Holding by the defense. Ten yard penalty and fourth from the end of the run. First down. Well, here is that long journey into the start of the season. The trip to Jacksonville for the Pigskin Classic, the game against Virginia. And these are round trip miles. To the Springs to take on Air Force, and ahead they go to the Carrier Dome at the end of this month to play Syracuse, Colorado State, and Utah in conference to close the season. Over 10,000 round trip miles. That should get them an upgrade. By well, the way, airlines go now, not really. There's a no gain, another negative play. Margin Hooks is tackled by Ellis Wims, the defensive right end who scored the touchdown earlier. We'll come back and finish the point about all their trap. This game was scheduled, and ESPN asked to have it moved to a Thursday night game. The Virginia game was scheduled. The Air Force game got moved because Air Force had scheduling problems because of who they play later on in the year. Army and Navy, there are other problems with scheduling them you have to do it late in the year so all the brass and everyone else can be there for the pomp and circumstance that's part of that great tradition and they also play Notre Dame in October so Air Force had a tough non-conference schedule and thus the Air Force BYU conference game had to be moved up into what was going to be a dark date last Saturday margin hooks down to the 25 for the first down so that hurt them but what also hurt them is they chose to add the pigskin classic against Florida State at the start of the season, knowing the schedule is already going to be tough. And four games in 19 days, there's got to be a price you pay. You make a lot of money to get a game like that, but there's also a price you pay, and we're seeing some of that here tonight. Tough on the players, tough on the coaches. Third and one coming up for BYU, down 31-7. Charlie Peterson doing a nice job of mixing up the cadence. He's on this drive alone, he's been able to get Mississippi State to jump off sides three times. That's one of the ways to slow down an aggressive defense who's jumping the snap count, mix it up. Those defensive linemen with 31 to 7, they're also saliva yes. coming out of their mouth. <laughs> Just like cool. Five yard penalty. First down. Picks the ball hard to handle to the center. Eighth penalty on Mississippi State. Four on this drive. ABC Sports College Football. Split the country three ways. North Carolina, Florida State. Washington, Colorado. New Heisel's team goes to winless Colorado. And Michigan, UCLA in the Rose Bowl. Saturday on ABC Sports, your home for the Bowl Championship Series. A first down run for Brian McDonald. Doesn't go very far. BYU's just outside of 20. Pick Prather feeling a little pain. Junior from Faulkner, Mississippi. I think one of the other ways to look at a defense and evaluate a defense is instinct and, and understanding of what the coach wants. It's one thing when a coach draws up a defense and then you go out and you, if you may try to make adjustments in the game and sometimes players are able to do that and sometimes they're not. This defense has great instinct and that's probably the best attribute you can say about it. Out of, the, out of the gun, Regal moves. Here comes seven dogs. Will Snowden caught it. Big Prather hit him. That's a perfect example of Jolie Dunn's theory. He blitzed everybody, but he did not have man coverage. He had a zone blitz, which means the defensive back will be back there waiting for that flare. Jody Dunn's a master at that. Look what they've done today. Not bad, huh? They had five turnovers in Here's 75 plays against Memphis State in the opener. That's amazing. Kirk, that's out of 30 plays run by BYU. Seven of them have been going in the wrong direction. Cougar timeout. Inside of five minutes, second quarter. Defensive coordinator, Jolie Dunn. Gotta love this situation. Who was the original soul man? Jan Ma Everything. That's 
sun setting on the Wasatch Mountains, the western base of the Wasatch, part of the Rockies. We're in the heart of the Utah Valley here in Provo. What a gorgeous city. As clean a city as you can find in America. I wanted to show you guys. Yes, sir. Robert Redford watching the game from up there. Sunday. 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 He's got to take us up there next time we come back, Lee, in October. Told us what an enjoyable time it is there. Third and 13. Here's the pig. Breather with another sack. His given name is Edward. He's called Pig because in elementary school, he would observe the eating habits of his mates and then just scarf up the leftovers. Right there, we've seen this all night. The pressure once again coming from the outside, but it's because all the blockers are taken up by the inside linebackers blitzing, freeing up the dog backer from the outside, Pig Prather, who moves from safety up to that dog position. You can see they're having a lot of success with it. Owen Hotsman for a 48-yarder. This would be his career long. I missed him. Very close, but no good. Mississippi State will get the ball back up 24. And in good field position as well. One of the reasons why the Mississippi State is killing from the outside has got to be a hot pattern. When you bring too many block pass rushes for blockers, Mike, you got to have a hot man. And I'll very guarantee you that Bobby Bosco is telling Peterson there's got to be a hot on that play. But before we saw Bosco, the man talking to him was the tight end to be the opening goal. <laughs> Maybe the only way to quiet Fred, the oxygen. Well, Kenny Mayne hosts the Ultimate Sports Fan Quiz Show, The Two-Minute Drill, Mondays at 7 on ESPN. Two-Minute Drill, you can watch it every Monday right after Sports Center. First down, run up the middle for Dante Walker. Takes it very close to another first down. Spot will move the chains inside of four minutes. First down, Mississippi State has not played a game at home yet. In nine days, they go to South Carolina. They have a very good schedule the way it worked out for them with the opener September 2nd at Memphis. 12 days to prepare for the game at BYU and then nine days to prepare for the game at South Carolina on the 23rd. Back into the air. Nice job to get it away. The rush was coming from Brett Kiesel. Second down coming up. Mississippi State out to a big lead here in the first half. A lot of it has to do with the defense, but the play of their quarterback has been pretty impressive tonight. He's been able to do a lot of things with his legs. Big, powerful quarterback. He's lifted a lot of weights in the offseason. You can see he also has been able to maintain his speed. Here he takes the ball down to about the six-yard line. Later in the second quarter, recognizing again there's an opening. Not only is he going to pick up a first down, he's going to take this one all the way in for a touchdown. Tonight, he has four carries for 114 yards and a touchdown. He's also thrown for a score, so Wayne Mattkin off to a great start. Play clock at zero. Dropping back five for delay of game. The penalty nine on Mississippi State. their games last year as you look at Madkins numbers Mississippi State had double digits in penalties including that game down in Atlanta the, uh, the Peach was that the Peach Bowl League Chick-fil-A Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl that is correct we didn't invent it they didn't invent the chicken sandwich they just made it better yeah, just, yeah just made it better <laughs> second and 15 out of the gun Mackin stands in the pocket. Incomplete. Tyson Smith, the strong safety, was coming for coverage on Donald Lee. Lee has stepped in to be the starting tight end. C.J. Simones, who caught the game-tying touchdown in the Egg Bowl against Ole Miss last year, is uh, out of school now at Mississippi State, so Donald Lee assuming the number one tight end role. See, Madkin went right up to Lee right after the throw, saying, come back, come back to the football, and we have a completion there. So he's, he's taking control much more this year than he's done in the past. They need to get across midfield into the BYU 48 to keep the drive alive. They bring seven. That is caught by Justin Griffith, but he has to be down. 
because he caught it rolling on the ground. Pretty good catch. And that whistle blows, it's okay. Well, it's an interesting uh, way back right there. You see him, he's under control. The big two things. Number one, he's a junior. And number two, he doesn't have Wyatt around anymore to be in co competition. You know what? When you give a quarterback the position, he matures automatically. I've never liked the two quarterback situation because it hurts the confidence of one of them. I agree. Prentice Cole is kicking. Med major. He wants to be a dentist. 396. The grade point average. Young man out of uh, Rexburg, Idaho. So Jared Lee, congratulations. Our Circuit City Scholar Athlete of the Week. Preseason All Mountain West Conference performer at the safety spot. It is Church of Latter day Saints Mission in Italy. That's a good look at number nine. Peterson throws a screen now. Brian McDonald. I just love to be quiet and listen to Mississippi State hit. They look good. They sound good defensively. You went to an NFL game, what, a week ago or so? Sunday, I saw Salsa the uh, Lion, yeah, Lions Redskins. Probably not quite. This probably isn't quite that fast, but it'll remind you a lot. It's a swarm, though. There's yeah, no room to fly. No. no time to think. you got to remember, the National Football League takes all the best <laughs> players from all over the country like this. They put them in one league. It's too hard. That's, That's a very good concept. Thank you very much. Isn't that great? That'll help me work in the draft next year, Lee. Thanks. Martin Hooks. He's an NFL prospect across the 30 and to the 33. Sports Center in game at the half, hosted by Linda Cohn. Hello, Linda. Hello, Mike. And yeah, coming up on Sports Center in game, we'll get you covered with the NL East race, both the Braves and the Mets in action. How about a little halftime blitz, taking you to all the key locations of some important Saturday showdowns? And yes, we will have hidden video. Now back to you, Mike. Okay, Linda, we'll see you in a little bit for the Sports Center in game original course halftime report that includes Chris Fowler, Mike Godfrey, Ron, Ron Gilmore. Looking at the weekend ahead. Blitz picked up by the freshman Whalen. But Peterson finally is captured. That's that man again. The quick Mario Hagan. Mario Hagan has the potential to be one of the best linebackers in the SEC. They bring him a lot on the blitz because he has the ability to come after the quarterback. And I think he has a, a great ability to come. He's relentless. Watch him. He comes through the block. And he doesn't give up. That is a great coaching point there about never giving up and fighting back and finding the quarterback. See, puts his hand down. Quarterback thinks he's free, and Hagan brings him down. One of the reasons he's so active is, remember, the guy was a defensive end. He was a running back. So, obviously, he's a tremendous athlete. Hey, that's a good-looking athlete from that defense. It's a BYU timeout. Like 62 seconds before the half. The Bulldogs looking quite impressive. Sports Center in-game, the original course halftime report. Linda Cohen with those stories ahead. Look at that. Is that beautiful? Oh, man. Gosh. Beautiful part of the world if you've never been here. 45 minutes south of Salt Lake City, Provo, Utah. <laughs> Broken up by Eugene Clinton. Pass intended for Margin Hooks. They cover, they stop the run, they pressure you, they hit, they confuse. Out of 35 plays, BYU has had 10 of them have been negative. Unbelievable. I mean, that is really tremendous pressure. You know what? It's one thing to be aggressive, but a lot of times when you're when you're aggressive, you're and relentless, you're undisciplined. Well, these guys, they, they're able to maintain the discipline to go along with that, that uh, relentless attitude. Third down, throw incomplete, fourth down. You know, lean out the like, 36 plays. Don't forget, 10 incompletions in addition to the 10 negative plays. So that's 20 plays that went nowhere or backwards. Look at the rushing story. Two long Madkin runs out of that, and it's still a dominant Mississippi State performance. Aaron Edmonds will punch again, Junior. 
California. He's had a couple of beauties so far. This one returnable. 50 yards of kick. On the run, the wide receiver, Huntington. And Larry is brought down. Mike Nelson, reserve running back, made the tackle. Lavelle Edwards' team has been getting off to very slow starts this year. Outscored by 68 points in the first four games of the season. Don't forget, I know it's almost impossible, but they did score 38 points against Virginia in the second half to win it. Is that correct? Yes, that is accurate. It's accurate. They got them where they want them. They're all right. And that would, that would just be you showing once again why you are the coach, just reminding people anything's possible. Mississippi State wants to add some more here in the good field position. And can throw and catch out of bounds. Smartly thrown to Harold Lindsay. This is an interesting piece of action, Kirk. They're practicing a two-minute drill right now. Just so they can get a little practice. That was a two-minute drill play. Guy catches yep. going out of bounds, stop the clock. Second career catch for one Harold Lindsay. Had one against Vanderbilt in 98. I think they were happy they made the trip from Starkville. Our hotel was full of Bulldog fans. Lime maroon and white. After picking up three. Smacking. Can't bring them down. Out of bounds, no game. Closing quickly was Darius Wilson, the junior cornerback. The other thing that comes along with being an experienced quarterback is you know, a lot of times you see quarterbacks that need to play to be brought in to them. You have a receiver bringing the play, or you maybe you have uh, a running back bringing the play here at Mississippi State. They, they signal in the play to Wayne Matkin. You have a couple assistant coaches signaling in the play. Also some uh, backup quarterbacks who are probably giving formations and things like that. But this is something that Wayne Matkin a year or two ago could not have been able to do. The reason why they have more than one guy doing it, one of them is hot, and the right. other one's not. Like, like a third, third base coach, coach. baby. Oh. Third base coach. Quarterback draw, a very nice play in the middle of the defense by Chris Watkins. Sophomore from oh, that is Temanali, I beg your pardon. The senior defensive end, 99, not 98, made the play, and this will spin down to halftime. Fans ready? Yep. Ready for a good half? <laughs> I don't know what the tube of it, everybody else is. I wonder what they have for dinner downstairs in the press box. Well, Lee, you can find out right now. What kind of dessert do you think they have? I, don't know. I bet you it's better what they have over at Well, Wayne Matkin was the main course that BYU had in the first half. 239 yards of total offense, including a couple of touchdowns at the break. Mississippi State by 24. Now, Sports Center in game, the original course halftime report. Back to our beautiful studio, and here's Linda Cohn. Thank you, Mike. Coming up in moments in Sports Center in game. Second half time here in Provo, 31-7, the Mississippi State lead. Look at the yards that the Bulldogs put up and the 10 negative plays that BYU had. Part of the story here in the first half. BYU does get the ball to start the second half. As it has cooled off a bit here in Provo from our mid-90s kickoff temperature. Unseasonably mild time of the year, a little return of summer here in Utah. That's the dominant first half performance. Mississippi State will try to protect the lead and send the defense after Mississippi or BYU's offense again. John Michael Marlin. Forced the touchback. No return possible for Paul Peterson. Well, let's take a look at one of the Mississippi State defensive stars, Pig Prather. He headlines our Home Depot coaching adjustment from the first half. Well, Mississippi State's been doing this all night. Look how many they're bringing, eight. BYU only has seven to block. We saw this in the Fiesta Bowl. Remember Florida and Nebraska? Same thing here. If you notice, he's always coming from the right side of the quarterback because he outnumbers him on that side. But again, BYU has to either keep some tight ends in or some backs in to help maximum protect to protect this quarterback because they don't have enough 
to block how many blo uh, rushers Mississippi State's bringing. Or have a hot pattern to the wideout with a post group. Two coaching adjustments for the offense. Led by Charlie Peterson making his first collegiate start tonight. To margin hooks, the first down across the 30 and 2 and 36. Here's Jerry Punch. Now, at halftime, uh, Lavelle Edwards talking about his BYU offense. He was concerned about the execution on the offense as far as being able to continue to pass protect. He told his football team essentially the same differential we had in the first half at halftime against a very good Virginia team, and look what happened. We came out, played our game, executed the second half, and we ended up winning the football game. We're a second-half football team. We saw it at Florida State, and we saw it at Virginia. We need to see it again here tonight. They have been thus far this year by necessity. They've been in big halftime holes. A lot of people coming. Peterson throws on the run. Nearly intercepted by Fred Smoot. He was sniffing that baby out. Peterson, Peterson was rolling right. Quick word from the quarterback coach, Robbie Bosco. This is where Peterson wants to throw the football right now as he's on the run he has Pittman but he elects to go to the inside man and conceded. Fred Smoot was there that's one that I'm sure Smoot would love to have back. The problem with that time is that Peterson wanted to throw the football but the pass rush is so much. That's the problem with a situation like this. They just teed off on him. They got to run some draws and screens to keep him away from the quarterback. Talking to Mike Miguel the receiver about helping out Peterson. There's a run on second down with McDonald. And Brian picks up about five. Junior, junior from Buena Park, California. That's exactly what I was talking about. Even if it only makes five yards, what it does is slows down those pass rushers so they don't just take a bead at that quarterback. He has no choice. Kirk, the problem with this situation is this. The Jolie Dunn right there is the master at making adjustments from the side. Look, he has not one single pad. Nothing. Headset. Nothing. nothing. He's got nothing. He's got nothing. He just stands there and calls the play. Third and six. Here comes six of Joe Lee's defenders. Margin hooks can't hang on. Oh, is that a fumble? Wow. Anytime, guys. Incomplete pass. Yeah, Somebody can uh, signal it. Thank you. Fourth down. Gosh. Now, Robertson right here. Watch this play. Kendall covers him really good from the inside. It's man for man all over. But the thing I like about him now, see how he looked at the last minute? And they teach him to strip. Strip means that you reach around to try to make the ball away from the guy. It was a well-thrown ball. Oh, yeah. and the ball was in there, but as you mentioned, Robinson brought his hand down to strip it out of there. Larry Huntington. Back for the Aaron Edmonds punt. Ten Bulldogs on the line. And they're all coming. Flag comes down as well. 41 yard punt. And Huntington's brought down after a couple. Flags aren't the line of scrimmage. If they get five yards for an offside penalty, if it was against Mississippi State, it would be fourth and a half foot. But if it's against Mississippi State, or against BYU, I should say, Mississippi State will make them kick again, I would think. That is the case. Here's Jackie with that stopwatch. He is right out there during warm-ups as Lavelle Edwards looks on. Jackie Sherrill is during warm-ups timing the punters and kickers just to see if he can get a kick block. The offense was in an illegal formation on the kick. The upbacks were too close to the line of scrimmage. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch again. Guys, at halftime, Jackie Sherrill talked about the great effort his team he put forth in the first half. Incredible effort, incredible play. He was concerned about the unintelligent plays, the clipping, the holding on the punt return, and the lack of intensity late in the first half. His big concern was, guys, we got a play left for behind. He reminded his team this team was behind by 21 points to Virginia and came back and won the football game. We've got a play like we're behind with intensity and play smart. And the big concern was not being able to get a defensive rush from inside with Davis and, and Blade are getting picked up by the backs. They're going to try to get those guys free to come out to the quarterback. Mike? All right, Jared, keep an eye on that when BYU comes back out offensively. Ten come after the punter again. This one's more of a line drive, but a deep line drive. 54-yard punt. Vincenzo Miller came back to get this one. Blue tacklers to the 28th. The ball came out. They fight for it. No signal yet.
Still no signal. Steele Davis was at the bottom of the pile for Mississippi State. BYU ball. Well, they chose to kick again. The break went BYU's way. Miller trying to make something happen. He, we saw it earlier when he had a big, get big playoff extra effort here. He's turning and twisting. The ball comes out and it's laying right there. It looks like a Mississippi State player has a chance to get the ball, but BYU, when you get to the bottom of that pile, every man for himself. Paul Walkenhorst, the linebacker, has been forced to play some because of the earlier injury to Josh Lowe. Walkenhorst, the outside backer, comes up with the recovery. And a golden opportunity for BYU from the 28. Anderson look at Enzo. Double coverage down there. Now comes back to Opahangawe, the tight end. And Tavita Opahangawe. Right at the ESPN first and 10 line. They're going to mark him just short. One of the things about Peterson is his mobility. Right here, Kirk. Right here. He needs to run. My gosh, he was wide open. So run, 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 run. But he just decides to throw the ball, which makes a good play. But the key to this thing will be if they don't panic and try to get him one at a time. Right. Just one at a time. You know, LaBelle's been around a long time to know. Catch him one at a time. Play defense. Second and one to run. You know, credit the fans at East Carolina last week and here this week, their team getting crushed in the first half. They hung around for the second half to reach for their team. Interesting here that BYU has come out in a lot of two tight end sets in the second half, adjustment to the pressure that we were talking about from Mississippi State from the outside blitzing of their dog linebackers. Jonathan Pittman on the run. They've got the receivers in Pittman and Margin Hooks. Two seniors, but Mississippi State is the cover guys to match with you. BYU would tell you if they had experience at quarterback and experience at receivers, this style of defense that Mississippi State plays plays into their hands if you can protect the quarterback because they love to see man because of the crossing routes and this offense you now see all around the country. This is what people like to use against man coverage. Two tight ends again, Kirk. Just Regal at the receiver spot. They run McDonald against to the nine, but a marker came down. Mississippi State hopped in the neutral zone. And now after more and more plays, there's more and more pushing and shoving. They got Mississippi State again with the Cates. That's the point I was going to make. I've always felt offside by the defense. Five yard penalty. Two second half. 11th penalty tonight. One of the best things you could do against a great defensive front four is to use non rhythmic calls. In other words, you go hut, 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 hut. You keep changing your snap count so you can draw them offside. If you let them tee off on a rhythmic count, it's all over. Listen to the last play. That's exactly what I was talking about. You use the snap count as an offensive weapon. Second and five for a first down. Six for a BYU second touchdown of the night. And a yard short, Michael Whalen, the freshman from Waldorf, Maryland. Whalen returned near his uh, Maryland home when they played at Virginia and had a very good effort. Remember, BYU's without starting quarterback and its starting tailback, Luke Staley, missing the game with a knee injury. That last play you saw a surge from BYU's offensive line. Mm -hmm. One of the first times I've seen it all night. They really did a good job of pushing Mississippi State back, and they plowed it in there. Whalen's a good-looking back for a true freshman. Boy, he was a highly recruited player, and they got the ball up Maryland. Mike said it. Six foot, two hundred pounder. Two tights, one for a first down, two for a touchdown. Well in the end zone. Turnover. 
ever costing Jackie Sherrill and Lavelle Edwards unchanged stoic sideline. Manners continue. Oh, and Putchman on for the extra point. Mississippi State players got right through the middle, but the kick went right through the middle. Luke Staley, who was a freshman star last year, the injured sophomore, talking to Marcus Whalen about his couple of yard touchdown run and how the offense kept its composure and capitalized on the Mississippi State turnover. Peterson did the job at quarterback. Brett Engeman, the injured starting quarterback, rooting out from the sidelines within 17. All the talk about Lavelle Edwards, Jackie Sherrill's been around the block, turns 57 in November, 23rd year coaching, getting after his talented defense after they watched the BYU offense capitalize on the turnover. And Whalen's first career touchdown makes it a 17-point game. Hutchman kicks it out of the end zone. A drive start from Mississippi State's 20 coming up. Well, we mentioned that they were going to go to two tight end sets here to try to take away some of the pressure. And watch the surge they get here from the left side of the line as well. Two tight ends. Nice blocking on the left side by Teague Whiting. And they push it into the inside. That's a nice, strong run there by that young running back, Marcus Whalen. Okay, from a coach's standpoint, you're on the B-wide sideline. The only way you can win this ball game is on defense, not on offense. Defense... Mississippi State had the ball seven times in the first half. You've got to stop them, play them one series at a time, and you can come back to win this game. You need a turnover, too. Time to throw for Maggis to the tight end, Donald Lee. He had his knee down when he caught it, so that will be an eight-yard pickup. Tackle made by Paul Walkenhorst. Again, uh, 47, the freshman from Utah. Walkenhorst is in because Josh Lowe, the strong side linebacker, the senior, Lavelle Edwards, loves those linebackers. But Lowe hurt his knee in the first half. Uh, ligament damage, Jerry told us, an MRI tomorrow. Again, Sparky Woods, first play out of the gate in the second half with a big lead. You think they're going to try to run, eat some clock? No, he comes out, first play, and he's throwing. Again, great job not being conservative on offense. Two and two here. Second and two run with Dante Walker. To get back to the line of scrimmage. Tyson Smith, the senior, up from the safety spot. Big third down coming up. This entire half, every single time Mississippi State tries to run the football, you're going to find both the safeties for BYU up in the line of scrimmage tight. It's going to be tough for Mississippi State to be effective running the ball. But also dangerous for BYU. Play action pass to serve. Burnham gets one. I said the call by Woods on the first play was great. Keep them on it. Three on the play clock, now two. Option Walker. Exactly what I said. That's one down. You bring them over to the and you say, look, we've won that little game. We're in business now. There's going to be five more of those. And if we can stop them at least four of those five, maybe we can catch them. Mississippi State will not be able to run the football in the second half. That time they had 11 guys within three yards of the line of scrimmage. Prentice Cole. Booming kick. Driving Regal to the 18. Taken down finally at the 25. And Brigel went a long way for a seven yard return. Getting spirited down there. Punt was 54. The return was seven. BYU has scored. They've stopped. Flag is down. Before we go to break, flag's thrown back to the 37 yard line amongst a bunch of bodies. And yeah, let's check it out with Steve Landis, our referee from the Southeastern Conference. During the return, blocking the back by the receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Drive will start from the 15 for Wayne Peterson when you come back. 31-14, MSU. 
the Olympics on everyone's mind. Can't go very far in the state of Utah without seeing the Olympic rings in 17 months. Salt Lake City welcomes the world for the 2002 Winter Games. Michael Whalen, the freshman running back for BYU, watches as the Cougars start out of the gun from the 15. Peterson looks like he's throwing with some mustard here. Ben Horton to the 22. The seven, top punch. After the last defensive uh, stand or attempted stand, let's give up a touchdown from Mississippi State senior cornerback Fred Smoot up and down the bench in the player's face, in his defensive lineman's face, saying, guys, we promised the offense that they gave us 21 points, we would win the football game. They gave us 21 points, and now we're letting them down. We cannot let them down. we got to play with intensity. Fred Smoot never had a loss for words, guys, even with his own teammates in their face trying to get them fired up. Intense look there. They run Kalani Sataki. And the senior will move the chains. A fullback carries for a first down. Smooth said a lot of times he gets on his own offense about performing better tonight. The offense is putting up some points, and he said he doesn't hesitate if the defense is slacking or letting up a little bit. He'll get on the defense. So Doc all over that with Freddie Smooth on the sideline. One thing also, if you notice, the crowd's back in this ball game. It was very quiet in that second quarter. They're back, and that will definitely help BYU in this ball game. First down throw. Quick hitter, Margie Hooks. Got away from him. Tackle and two to the 43. First down. Margie at 17 for Margin. Kirk, you and I talked about it before. The only way to beat the quick pass rush is quick passing game. Right there, it's Margin Hooks. The quarterback, Peterson, went one, two, three, boom, got it to him. Good strategy, right? They get rid of the football quickly, and also pretty pretty interesting that Mississippi State's soft with their corners and are able to get off that quick hitch to the outside. Brett Engeman, the starting quarterback, the first three games. A little applause for Margin Hooks, his receiver. Comes out to the top of the screen. They bring five. Peterson's pass is deflected. I believe Dorset Davis was the hand that got up there. Double nines on the Mississippi State D-line. Boy, they love this guy, Dorset Davis. He's six foot six, 314 pounder, a junior. They say that this kid right here could definitely go in the first round. Watch him at the top of your picture. He'll get his hands up and right there. Six foot six. They love him. They think he's got the ability, Kirk, to be a first-round draft choice in the National Football League. They don't want him to be a first-round draft choice too soon. No. You know, he's, he's got another year of eligibility, and who knows if he'll come back, but he does have the ability to be a, uh, a first-round pick. Two of the former defensive linemen from Mississippi State are starting in the defense in the National Football League. Good age. Second and ten. Thomas to Brian McDonald. You see many outside run attempts. It's about four and a half yards there. It'll be Third and six coming up. Alvis McKinley and John Hilliard went to the NFL. They also had Kevin Sluter on that defensive line last year. So they had some excellent personnel, but have come back bigger and faster and perhaps even better this year. And that's the challenge for Charlie Peterson, quarterback making his first start against one of the nation's toughest defenses. This is the down right here. That Charlie Peterson knows about the pressure from Dick Prater. He's been coming from the top. Here he comes again. Picks them all up. McDonald released out of the backfield with Prather. And it's fourth down. That was interesting because Prather showed blitz. And I think he was intending on coming from the outside, but he recognizes. See him recognize the back slipping out? And does a good job of coming out there and, and uh, getting in the way of McDonald before he can make the catch. McDonald was on what they call a hot move, which means if Prater comes to work, I'm going to get the ball to you. What well, has a nice play by Prater. You that can time. see that BYU designed that play just because of the success Mississippi had, has had with Prather coming. But you can't coach what Prather just did. That was a great instinctive move by him. Sergio Miller waits for the punt. Mississippi State drive start from the 20 after this time. 31 14. Madkin put a whole bunch up for the first half. Defense had one score. The offense got the other 24. A lot of noise being made by the BYU fans. Looking to encourage the defense. Cougars in a 17 point hole. 
First down run for Desenzo Miller. Ran through a couple more tackles and got out to the 29. Chris Hope, senior out of Santa Ana, California, pulled down Desenzo. Desenzo Miller did a nice job here of reading the whole watch. Remember all running to daylight by Vince Lombardi? That was a perfect example. Everybody was stuffed up to the right. He found the open spot to the left. That was not the defense's fault as much as it was a great run by Desenzo Miller. They do a good job, Mississippi State, of blocking downfield with, from their wide receivers. Craig Stump, their wide receiver coach, obviously stresses that because if you can get through the initial surge, you have a chance to break one because the receiver's blocking. Second and two. The fullback, Kenny Williamson, lost the ball, but BYU was offside. So even though it's a fumble and a recovery, by Darius Wilson. In all likelihood, it's for not with the offside. <laughs> you see Lavelle Edwards' expression changed. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> that was a perfect example of Matkin using the snap sure. count as a weapon. A discussion here about the flag. There is no penalty. Well, well, there was no down. It was a fumble, which Mississippi State recovered. The next down will be third down. Yeah. Mississippi State recovered the fumble. Did I miss? Did I miss the uh, fumble recovery? Can we run that? No, Justin Jenkins, number eight, recovers it. That's questionable there. Yeah, yeah but watch number eight come up. There's no question. Number seven. What? Are you kidding me? Darius Wilson. Wait a minute. Ball that ball's all the way out. Wilson picks it up and starts running. Did he fumble it? No, he's down. Oh, they, they, they're going to say that they stole it that on the Butler on the, stole the ball coming down. Then it would be a first down for Mississippi State. Right? Because possession changed. Right. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. If, in fact, that's what they thought they saw. I'll tell you one thing. Justin Jenkins, number eight, oh. ends up with the ball at the end of the play. No. For Mississippi State, it's number 18, Brandon 18. Butler. 18, excuse me. Eight is Jenkins from Mississippi State. You just didn't see the one when he rolled over. Oh, okay. After the discussion, the decision. Ooh. Correction. The uh -oh. fumble was recovered by Brigham Young. <laughs> Look at Jackie Sherrill. Jackie Sherrill's out screaming at the official. He can't believe it. And those are his officials from the Southeastern Conference. Okay, remember we talked about the key thing. You've got to win the ball game when you're behind on defense. you got to get turnovers, especially when you're down by this clear margin. Let's watch if he's down before possession changes. He's down. No That's question. the question That's there. Right? BYU football, no question. Wow. And you got, you know what, even without the instant replay, you got to give the officials credit for getting the, the call. It took them a little bit of while. It took them a little time. Yeah, you're right. But they, the but they ended up getting it right. You're right. Absolutely. I still don't know if the guy was out of the neutral zone. First and ten, BYU with a huge opportunity. A little fake, a shot at the end zone. Down to the seven-yard line goes Will Snowden. Keep your eye on Will Snowden sneak out of the backfield. You know what this play looks like? Kirk, it's the play they opened the game with. Only the opposite way. Remember the guy was wide open? Yep. Same play. They made a great catch there. Great look, catch. Look at their nice concentration look at that. there. Nice play. Nice that was play. a good call because that play worked, but they didn't complete it in the first play of the game. Back to the two tight end look here. McDonald. Roll to the floor. The two tight end look forces Joe Lee Dunn's defense to show their hand. They can't disguise as well because they have to play it even against that kind of uh, offensive line front. Also, they put the tight end on one of those smaller dog linebackers. And that's right. exactly where they're running the football at. See him yelling at his guys. You can hear him get fired up. Touchdown, 
Mississippi State. Incredible. Josh Morgan, the sophomore from Vicksburg, Mississippi. I know Joe Lee Dunn is powerful, but I didn't know he had that kind of power. <laughs> well, I think they were afraid to go back over and talk to him <laughs> if they didn't do something good. You see that look he gave? Oh, man. Scott Westerfield. And it's the extra point. And somebody took a big old pin and put it in this big old balloon in the air. It's out. Just when it looked like Mississippi State was going to have to hold on. You know, we're not even done with the third quarter. And it looks like BYU has a chance to make it 31-21 from the very beginning. Charlie Peterson did not pick up the ball. Didn't get the snap at all. You got to wonder if he pulled out a little bit too soon or if the ball didn't get up. And at this point, once Morgan picked it up, you could tell he was going to go the distance. Nobody there to pick him up. He's not even... He just passed midfield, and there's no blue jerseys. Sometimes that happens near the goal line when the center has to reach slot, Real long, which means yep. he has to step over to the onside gap, and he doesn't get the ball up quite as far. That's why you have that kind of fumble near the goal line. Change of events in a big way. We've talked about BYU at all. Oh, they're tired, but I'll tell you what, as tired as they are, and I know they've only had three or four days, if they score there, momentum, this is a completely different game. <laughs> Goodness. With a long way to go. That, uh, that's a backbreaker right there for BYU. Would have been 31-21 or even 31-17 with a field yeah. goal. Would have made it a two-score game. That's one of those that you get real tired again after a play like that. And then you get to go back out and start the yeah. long drive. Yeah. Uh, 14, Mississippi State on time. This time Peterson decides to bring it out. Paul Peterson, related to Charlie, is pushed out of the 24. Look at the fighting all the way into the bench area. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, earlier in the week, Mississippi State head coach Jackie Sherrill in a press conference in Starkville, Mississippi, said, we're playing well on defense, but we've got to improve our defensive scoring. Said last year, our defense scored one defensive touchdown. In 1998, when we won the SEC West, our defense scored 66 points. We have got to score more with our defense this year, and so far this season, they have doubled last year's total. It's been a big night defensively for Mississippi State. Morgan took it to the house that time. They're fired up on the sidelines. Everybody's getting a little earful. The guy holding the down marker just got chewed out. Peterson's pass to Mike Regal, 29 yards to the 49. The ball was on the ground, but the ground caused the fumble, so it stays there. Well, to amplify Jerry's point, here's what the defense has done to Lavelle Edwards' team tonight. A couple of scores on fumble recoveries. One was a short one, one was a long one. Four sacks and the 11 plays for negative yards out of now 56 BYU snaps. BYU has certainly settled in offensively. on one side of them and Jason Clark the backup linebacker on the other side of them. It's like the Mississippi State of old the way they're rotating bodies in and out at this point. Now last year they used to rotate the entire front seven based on the series and now they've been doing it just one at a time but at this point in the game trying to keep their bodies fresh they're rotating a lot of people in. Lee talked about it before no notes no headset no socks. Joe Lee Dunn's all. You and the no socks. No socks. Everybody he talks about doesn't wear socks. Mr. Dowdy from uh, Dowdy Fitton Stadium at uh, East Carolina, also a sockless. Ryan McDonald. To the 45. Where How's he doing, anyway? Third and three coming up. Did he recovered from last week. No comment. He's <laughs> taking his money back from East Carolina. 
They're taking the name off the stadium <laughs> after that performance. Got on the jet and got out of town. Right, look. East Carolina's going to try to bounce back. They play Tulane coming up down in Greenville, North Carolina, on Saturday. We're going to be in North Carolina next week for North Carolina State and Georgia Tech out of the ACC on Thursday Night Football. Time out here by BYU. They're first taken in the second half. Inside of two and a half, third quarter. Mississippi State, two defensive scores. A 24-point lead. Wayne Matkins, great first half in the defense. A second touchdown on a fumble recovery here in the second half. The reason Mississippi State leads by 24. It's third and four. And against the pressure, Peterson. Short for his tight end, Doug Jolly. They bring pressure and they play man coverage behind it. They've got the players to do it. Nobody open. How about the power rush here? Right up the middle. They're just going to come. Hagan comes right. Look at him going right through the running back. Right through him. Well, the ought to go through the running back. I mean, the guy weighs 253 no, pounds. And the running back weighs 200. He's 240 pounds. Sataki. No way. He ran over the guy that's 200 pounds. No. Okay, punch for Aaron Edmonds here. Tumbling into the end. Well, it's certainly been the big story this week. ESPN Classic presents the rise and fall of Bob Knight. Sports Center flashback at 9 Eastern. A look at Knight over the last two decades. Sports reporters hosted by Jeremy Schaap. The best of the Sunday conversations with Bob Knight at 10.30 Eastern. And a 97 up close primetime special. You'll see the rise and fall of Bob Knight tomorrow on ESPN Classic. If you don't have ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC and demand it. Did you see the number they had in watching Bobby Knight's a million two watching? A lot of people. In, in Indianapolis, more people watch Bobby Knight than watch Regis on Millionaire. By 18%. Dialed into the TV ratings. How many people watch it? 1.2 million. Watch Bobby Knight's conversation. You know, guys, on ESPN Classic on Wednesday nights, they run an old college football game, a classic college football game. It's great. You get some Keith Jackson, Ohio State, Michigan games from the 70s when they had AstroTurf at the yeah. Big House. Some great old games. It's, a, it's terrific. It's 9 o'clock every Wednesday night. And if you have ESPN Classic and you love the sport, you really enjoy some of those games. Do you have any Indiana games? I don't think IU games from your era made the uh, ESPN Classic. Yes. We can check on that there, Coach. Back in the screen, here is Desenzo Miller. He's been very busy tonight. Eight yards and a shot out. Lee always sends messages to people. Can I send a message out to Classic? Because I have Classic. And I, every Wednesday night, I come home, 9 o'clock Eastern, to see what game is going to be on college football-wise. And I'll be there. They play a lot of times in some of the same games. My message is spread the wealth. We have so many great games. And every Wednesday, that's the highlight of my night. I come home to ready to watch. It could be any time of the year. College football Wednesday night. You can't beat it. See Bosco, the 84 holiday. That's right. That's right. Third and one. Tight end for a power play here. And behind the power set, Dante Walker. Let's check the spot. All you had to do was get to the yard line for the first down. I don't think he made it. I don't think so either. Where that Official came in from the side. It'll be fourth down. Well, do you go for it, you guys? No. Come on. <laughs> well, a little humor. <laughs> I don't think Jackie's thinking about his humor right now, Lee. Prentice Cole, the punter, comes on in the game. Dante Walker was stopped on that play. Blockers over on this side. He's doing that on his own. And a late flag comes in. Got a couple of legal blocks there, it looks like. You know, you saw Jackie Sherrill chewing old Matkin out like crazy. Let me tell you what. It was Dante Walker. Was I don't know which one he was chewing out, but I think Number three. Number three? But let me tell you why he was. Because he laid up and didn't get it. You know, he kind of laid up there and just didn't get it. And that's what he's yelling at him about. 
Madkin being the leader is over there. And Herbie, yep. you know this as a quarterback. When the coach chews out another guy as the leader, you got to put the pieces back together. That's your job, especially when you're a guy that's been around and, and played in a lot of games. Walker gets his head down. He's a young player. You need to boost him back up and realize there's still another quarter to play. You're going to need him at some point in this game. Or this season. Sure. That's something that Wayne Madkin probably wouldn't have done a year ago. Very comfortable with his role on this year's team. Conference here. I'd like to bring up something about Bobby Knight because that reminds me of what he did. Bobby Knight, I was with him for 10 years, and he always coached against the way the game should be played. And if somebody did something wrong, no matter what the score was, Block he corrected Block in the back by the kicking team. Block in the back, Block Block the back by the receiving team. team. Penalties, Penalties, offset, Penalties. replay. So no matter what the score or the opponent, up 25, down 25, there's a right way to do it. Exactly. And I saw Bobby Knight do that years and years and years because he coached against perfection, the way the game should be played, not against the scoreboard or the opponent. Here's the kicker, Prentice Cole. You see that tape right arm? In there is a tongue depressor to help keep his arm straight for dropping the ball. I had to go up and check and look. Jackie Sherrill told us about yeah. that yesterday. See that you can see there's a little bit of a ridge in the middle. There's a tongue depressor in there to help keep his arm straight for the drops on the punt. Cole kicks again. Well, a lot higher, a lot deeper. It's 55 yards of kick. Miguel up the middle of the field is spilled at the 25 tackle made by Julius Griffin. Well, we had Lee Mail in the first half. It's time for QB mail in the second half for Mr. Herbstreit. So let's see uh, the online question for you, Herbie. Who will be the coach at BYU next season? They gave you an easy one. Yeah, really. They <laughs> gave me a tough one. It sounds like a lot of talk about Gary Croton, offensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears. He has some ties here to BYU and with the success that the Bears have had in the NFL last year. If he doesn't get a job in the NFL, then I, I think there's a pretty good chance he'll be a leading candidate. See where that question's from? Illinois. That's right. So maybe Joseph is a Bear fan and wants to know who will replace Lavelle Edwards, who turns 70 next month. I want to second what my friend said. I think he will be the coach because of the fact of connection with BYU. Plus the fact is he has a connection here by being a Mormon. And I think there's no question that the Mormon is going to have to come here. And he's the best qualified man. Had great success. I think it was Louisiana Tech. Yep. Yes, he was an offensive yeah. passing coach. Perfect man for this job. Troton also grew up in Lavelle Edwards' hometown of Orem, Utah, and is friends with the athletic director, Val Hale. Here's Jerry Punch. Guys, you talk about Gary Croton. You talk about his demeanor. He fits perfectly here with the way he coaches the players, the way he's more of a player for players. Coach, as you mentioned, an incredible offensive mind. His record for the one year at Louisiana Tech, pretty impressive, although he played at Nebraska in the opener. He set an NCAA record for passing yards against Nebraska's defense. Troy Edwards on that team. Wow, and it falls incomplete. Other people have been mentioned who fit that way, and as you said, Lavelle Edwards is talking with us. It'll be a Mormon who takes over as the head coach here. Andy Reid, who's now the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Charlie Stubbs, the offensive coordinator at Alabama. Don't forget the guys on this staff, the coordinators, Ken Schmidt and Lance Reynolds. And that's County 12 on Mississippi State. We're not even going to cover the penalties now. It's just <laughs> there's like one every every snap. The uh, of those five candidates, two having the NFL ties. Uh, obviously, Andy Reid in Philadelphia, where that thing is starting to turn in the right direction, be difficult for him to entertain thoughts of leaving. And might be tough to attract Gary Croton as well. You can pay a lot in the NFL, and Gary Croton interviewed for a head coaching job and interviewed quite well with the Kraft family up in New England before the Patriots eventually hired Bill Belichick. First and five run for Kalani Sataki. It's about three yards, and that should do it for the third quarter. Each team scored seven points, but it was an entertaining quarter to say the least because the Mississippi State defense, a little bit back on their heels, BYU changed its attack, was going after them with two tight ends, kind of gaining a foothold in there, but Jolie Dunn with his team backs to the goal line, said, get fired up. And 95 yards, and Josh Morgan fumble return later. The lead is 24. 
And now the fourth quarter from Provo. Mississippi State 38, BYU 14. It was 31 Second 7 at the break. The team three. a touch in the third. Mississippi State by the defense. Marcus Whalen, the freshman. Wrapped up, but after he picked up the first down to the 37. Our Miller Lite storyline tonight in Provo. BYU has gained some yards back, but that 226 has come in 61 plays. You earn every inch against Mississippi State's defense. Wayne Matkins running doing the story. He has run for over 100 yards in this game. And Charlie Peterson, the second string quarterback, playing because of Brett Engelman's injury, has completed just under half of his passes. Done the best he can against this Mississippi State relentless pressure. Here comes seven, including Kate Craven. Got there a step late, but the pass is still incomplete. Looks like it was going to be picked off by Eugene Clinton. Herbie, you're drawn. If you're a quarterback, yeah, who sees a quarterback is ready to get hit? I saw it coming. He was playing with Peterson, the quarterback. Watch him here. He's kind of let. He's playing cat and mouse with him, trying to make him audible. Here he's going to show blitz, and at the last second, he's going to come and just misses him by a step. But prior to that, he was going back and forth to the receiver, to the quarterback, to the receiver, to the quarterback during the cadence, messing with the mind of the quarterback. The quarterback has to have a hot shot read. He's got to throw a quick post right over his head. Not the other side. Crazy Prather dancing around again. He's coming. This time he's got to cover the tight end or the back, I should say. And it's Kalani Sataki. Prather ended up pulling down. Boy, you've got to be some kind of athlete to play that position. You know what? They give him so much freedom. And it's such a feel. A lot of times they'll turn him loose and let him put the pressure on. And other times they'll turn him loose and then they'll allow him to feel the back. If the back comes to him, follow the back out. And in that case, he did. And he held him short of the first down. That's the dog position in this Mississippi State defense. So, Pig is a dog for the Bulldogs. Third down and two. Three receivers in the game for BYU. First down toss. Two margin hooks. Josh Morgan grabs by the net. Now that's a perfect example we're talking about. If you had a hot pattern, if the pig is coming from that side, you throw the ball right where he vacated on a quick play. Don't throw the ball the opposite way. That was a tremendous call. See him? He gets the ball out before, even if the pig was coming, he could get it back. That time, just taking advantage of a soft corner there and throwing it underneath it. You know, Mississippi State defense is all about emotion and passion. This second half is haven't quite played with that same emotion we saw in the first half. Uh, run for Marcus Whaler. Marcus Whaler. Smoot made the tackle. Another uh, the 14-yard chain mover. First down, BYU. You know they have. They have played great football defensively tonight, Mississippi State, but you know how Joe Lee Dunn is. He wants it for four quarters. They get out to a big lead. It's only natural. Here they have, here comes Pig again. This time they have a back and a center to push him out to open up that hole to take advantage of him coming upfield. But I guarantee you, when they study film, Joe Lee Dunn is going to get on them about effort in the second half. A lot of snaps. This is BYU's 67th offensive play of the night. And it was almost intercepted by Dorset Davis. Toby Galladay, the deflection. That's the thing that's amazing. These are three over 300 pound guys that are not only deflecting balls, but they're diving for them. You know? These guys are athletes. And they're not getting the same rotation on the defensive front four as they did last year. And they've seen a lot of snaps. 75 in the heat of the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, where it was 120 degrees on the field last week. And tonight, in the altitude of 4,500 feet here in Provo, this is snap 68. It's a lot of plays to see. McDonald. 27. Helmet came off in the uh, downfield blocking. The second half adjustments at halftime by Roger French, the offensive line coach, and Robbie Bosco have been 
absolutely brilliant. They're running draws now. The only, there's Roger French there. He's been there since uh, about a thousand years. <laughs> but he's been a, he's a tremendous <laughs> offensive life coach. I try to hire him once with the Orlando Renegades. I think he does as good a job as anyone. But they really, besides the pick coming from the split inside where there should be a hot pattern, his line is blocking very well. Peterson needs to take a timeout. It's the frustration for Robbie Bosco. One chance left to stop the clock. Mississippi State by 24. BYU, one timeout left. Trailing by 24, but driving here in the early stages of the fourth quarter on Thursday Night Football. Make it for Peterson. Terrific open field tackle. Fourth down. Set Davis again with Lee talking about some of that NFL type skill. All the action is going away from Davis, but he's 6'6, 315 pounds. Wow. In the open field, he's able to bring down a pretty athletic quarterback in Charlie Peterson. His defensive line coach, John Hendrick, told me that these guys Get all that. run the basketball courts. They're terrific athletes. Oh, that's he's incredible. Terrific looking that at is him. incredible. That John Hendrick is an outstanding defensive line coach. He's a physical specimen. Those kids love him. He plays very, very hard. They've got the finest front four I've seen in a long time. Better than Florida State. BYU's going to go for it on fourth and two. Margin Hooks lost the fight for the ball with Kendall Robertson. And a late fly comes in. Against Mississippi State, it would be flag number 13, and it will be. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a the call. It's either interference or it's not, right? But Mike, there was there was another there was another flag thrown late in the middle of the field. Oh, I see that now. You see that one yeah. there? Yeah. I'm interested to hear what this one's about. Pass interference by the defense during the live ball. The penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul and automatic first down. Then we've got a dead ball flag, so hang on a second. We've got one more penalty coming up. It was unsportsmanlike conduct by the defense. Yeah. Okay. That penalty will be enforced half the distance. First down. That's penalties uh, 12 and 13 on Mississippi State. It's Thursday Night Football on ESPN. Jackie Sherrill's Mississippi State team making a rare trip out west. Farthest west they've been since a visit to Colorado State in 1981. Cougar Stadium, the home opener for BYU, is watching the Cougars likely fall to 1 and 3. They fell behind 10 0 in the first. An avalanche of Mississippi State defense including two defensive scores and outstanding scrambling by the junior quarterback Wayne Madden has all added up to a 38-14 Mississippi State lead. Fred Smoot, margin hooks. Lee Toto right at the start of the game. Two people like to chat. Smoot has his own website, smootsmack.com, that fans have clipped and saved his best trash talking. Margin Hooks is a broadcast journalism major who's also proud of his verbal prowess. They both can back it up with some play. Peterson looking that way, and here's Hooks. And a flag on Smoot. Peterson's going to throw this into the corner. It's just a simple fade route. He gave him a quick move to the inside, holding him. That was probably pass interference there before he tripped him up there at the last second. On the defense, in the end zone. And of course, by rule, the ball is placed on the two-yard line. In that case, Hooks has the upper hand, talking a little trash. An interesting point here has to be made. Mississippi State's offense is not scored in the second half. I know, I know, but if. BYU would have scored on a one line. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And and coming back to this one, I'm yeah. telling you. But right. the point is, the Mississippi State offense has not scored a point in the second half. That's the penalty 15 on the Bulldogs. Toss. Wayland. Fraser. Tackle. 
Marcus Whalen on the carry. Do we have an idea how many tackles Craig Crater has made? Seven. Seems, he seems to be all over the place. Here he's going to be at the bottom of the screen, number 29. Once again, they're going to turn him loose on a goal line situation. Watch him run the ball down. Whalen cuts to the inside. Morgan does a good job as a free safety coming up. And once again, Big Prather is there to make the play. There's one guy, anyway, that hasn't let up one bit for four quarters. This is the 71st offensive play for BYU. Whalen. <laughs> Brian McDonald on the carry. I'm oh, sorry, it's McDonald. Beg your pardon. And there's a line of scrimmage by number 29, Nick Craver. Craver brings up third and goal from the three. The only way that you can attack a guy like Nick Craver is you've got to put a body on him. You cannot let him play what they call air. See, air means that there's nobody in front of him. You've got to put somebody, a man in motion, anything, just put somebody in his face. And they did it one time with a, they chipped him with a guard and cut underneath him, and they had a lot of success with it. you got to run under him when he's getting up field that quickly. He's Joey. We're in socks tonight, Lee. McDonald. Touchdown. They say he broke the play. Ryan McDonald. Penalty marker. Got picked up, no flat. Thank you, pardon. It's just become a reaction tonight. I see officials standing next to each other and ready to say a marker's down. Penalty. <laughs> Owen Potchman. Mississippi State defense got totally tired. Defense has been out here forever. They let up a touchdown on the run by McDonald. Say he broke the plane with the ball. Sataki, the fullback, blocking for him. Once you break the plane, even if it comes out, you got the touchdown. That's what it looked like a good call. 38, 21, timeout. Golfer Johnny Miller, basketball star Danny Ainge, and Philo T. Farnsworth, one of the fathers of television among the BYU alumni. Non-football players. It's 38-21 here. Bulldogs lead by 17. And no return. We have a winner. The hidden video winner from ESPN.com. We should do it after kickoff. It's a special team. Selection by a very wide margin. You voted Craig Jarrett, the punter for Michigan State, who took matters into his own hands. Going after several Marco players. Where's LeVar Arrington when you need him? He's making sure he gets in front of him, too. Yeah, he's going to get a penalty. So, like, a punter with an attitude. Congratulations, Craig Jarrett. A walkover winner in hidden video. Spartans won that game. They play at Missouri on Saturday. Back into the air. And just shy of a first down on the nine-yard pickup for Justin Griffith. Just a sidebar to that punter there. Sure. You might want to keep an eye on that because when the, when the teams that are going to be playing Michigan State play Michigan State in the next few weeks, you don't think in scouting Michigan State that they're going to be looking up number 12 and they're going to put the biggest linebacker they have to knock him into next week. So he wanted, after his punting this week, he might want to keep the head on a swivel. Missouri. Missouri. Saw that. The Tigers are probably going to be looking him up. They're second and short. Mississippi State offense needing to move the chains, and they finally do. First, first down of this half. Well, SportsCenter is coming up next. Linda Cohn and Dan Patrick. In there tonight. We have Mike Tyson tirade that they will show you. I'm sure it's not cards from like three years ago. Sports Center coming up as soon as we're done here in Provo. Look at that. It has been decidedly BYU controlling the ball offensively. And that was the first first down of the second half for Mississippi State. It's for a tired defense on this Mississippi State side. So Temanali was chasing him. I don't know if they'll get an official credit for a sack. Shouldn't. Be a rushing yard loss for Madkin. 
speaking of pretty good athletes playing defensive lines, so Tim Anali is a, is a great athlete, and leads the, uh, the defensive front along with Hans Olsen. Nolly is quick, great size. I guess he looks up to Javon Kurtz. That's his, uh, the guy that he tried to emulate. Kelly, the linebacker, brought down Justin Griffith. One of the things that, Lee, you always talk to us about, and I think you're right as a player, I, I totally agree with you. When a team gets out to a big lead, it's very easy for that team with the lead to kind of put their guard down a little bit. And with that much football left to be played, you go back to that goal line play where Josh Morgan took it 99 yards. Emotionally, this has been a completely different team by Mississippi State in the second half. Said the only way that BYU could win this ball game would be on defense. The score was 31 to 7. They had to stop them. They've stopped them on every single time. They haven't scored yet on the defense. One first down this half from Mississippi State. That's the way you come from behind, and they've done everything they can. The fumble going all the way has messed up everything for them. Great defensive and offensive adjustment by the BYU staff at halftime. That's been their trademark, and they play very good in the second half, make great adjustments. Miguel says, get out of the way. That'll be a 50-yard punt down to the 26, and Charlie Peterson in the BYU offense will try to get it going in the air, down 17, only one time out in the clock. There's very little sand left on it. Yeah, we'll see if Troy Aikman has made some progress towards that Monday night game against Washington, the Tyson tirade, and the baseball story. Linda and Dan, Sports Center after the game, followed by Baseball Tonight. Here on ESPN. And 27 times a wasted. Got to get going quick. Incomplete. Intended for Mike Regal by Charlie Peterson. Gentlemen, Charlie Peterson, first college start. All this pressure. Not bad. Not bad at all, considering the defense that he's going up against, the pressure that he's had to deal with. I think he's done a very good job. I think one of the things that hurt Charlie and all BYU is that they didn't have enough time to get ready for all of these blitzes and right. kinds of, of combinations. We talked about that about right? in the pre-show. If they'd had a little time like they did at halftime, they made some great adjustments. And in the starting quarterback. Flag is down. Sergeant Hooks is pushing across the 40. Anybody who I see tomorrow, I'm going to apologize in advance because if I don't say hello and I say flag is down, just understand we're being conditioned here. This is the 20th penalty of the night. The offense was in an illegal formation. Only six men on the line. And five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. It's not the official's fault. I mean, there's violations happening. From a Bell Edwards standpoint, as a coach has been in that position, he's looking at the rest of his schedule. UNLV, Syracuse, Utah State, all the way down the line. He is not going to play a football team that is good as Mississippi State the rest of the year. So if he can come out and get Charlie Peterson ready, get a couple other guys ready, get their morale back, this football team can win some games as the season goes on. Get Engelman, his starting quarterback, healthy. Right. Get Luke Staley, his starting tailback back. I haven't talked about that much tonight. But Staley missing from the lineup. Time here now for Peterson. Mississippi State drops some people in coverage. And it's intercepted by Connor Stevens, the linebacker. How about a third defensive score of the night? Ho-ho, oh, touchdown. That is three for the D from Starkville. And warn all the people handling traffic flow. There are a lot of cars coming your way. Okay. 
Connor Stevens the interception and touchdown. Just short. Can I tell you why they do that? Just to show other people on film. Thank you, Mike. Good job. So they have to practice it. Eight years of Randy Coach, I've learned a thing or two. I've also learned something else. Mississippi State's defense, best in the nation last year, may be just as good. They're only rushing a couple of guys here. That's what my point was. I was going to try to make it because of the fact he's been used to throwing a ball against all kinds of pressure. But what happens? They go two, drop nine. Whoop! Touchdown, Mississippi State. It's been a story tonight. Mississippi State's defense has dominated. Lee mentioned going into the break the way they were only rushing. In this case, it's only three guys coming up the middle, which has been completely opposite of everything they've done tonight. Watch Connor Stevens drop in zone. No pressure at all on, on Peterson, but he doesn't see Stevens. And at this point, this is what they do in practice. They love this. They're like a, they feed on this kind of thing when they get a turnover. It's a race to the end zone. Stevens picks up some blocks, and they're having some fun tonight defensively. 36 yards. The Mississippi State defense has scored as many touchdowns as the BYU offense tonight. Three apiece. Paul Peterson a knee. Jerry punched the sidelines. Guys, Joe Lee Dunn's been, had an incredible effort over the years as a defensive coordinator, and he certainly has done the job wherever he's been. In 1987, he was the South Carolina. They were ranked top five in the nation in total defense. 93 Ole Miss, number one in the nation in total defense. 95 Arkansas led the SEC in total defense. And 99 in Mississippi State, number one in the nation in total defense. I would say he gets the job done with no socks wherever he goes. And his, he, he started as a high school coach in Columbus, Georgia in 1964, then went to Tennessee, Chattanooga, New Mexico, and then worked his way up. Great defensive coordinator. When Lavelle Edwards was first coach at BYU and Joe Lee Dunn was at New Mexico, they faced each other back in the early 70s. Marching hooks with the catch. 27 yard line. His schemes are very interesting, and you don't see them very often in college football, but I think it's the way he gets his kids to buy into the schemes and then play with such effort. That's what makes his defense so good. I'd like to mention the rest of the staff, Mike, sure, when you get a chance. Jolie Dunn's a great coach, but he's got some guys that help. John Hetrick, very good defensive line coach. Jim, Jim Tompkins works with the linebackers and Melvin Smith with the defensive backs. I tell you what, and I'm saying this again, they're as good as Florida State University on the defensive side of the ball. I don't think you're shocked in the wall there. You're, That's good. I mean, this, this defense is legit. Uh, uh, hang on a minute. Uh, that, that's a bit of a shock because of the national profile of Florida State and the national profile of Mississippi State. That's what makes it surprising. Well, to me, I, I think for all of us, we watch a lot of college football. I don't think it's shocking to say that this team can run and play relentlessly just like a Florida State defense. The thing that's different is they don't have the depth. Florida State, I bet you, if we looked at their 22, their first first string and second string players, that's where Florida State is a different team at a different level. You know what else? Florida State gets to those big leads, and they can turn their guys loose. Mississippi State, not tonight aside, usually doesn't score this many points. So oftentimes, they can't turn the guys loose of 17, of 21. Catch made down the middle, and Ben Horton, who's been banged up this year with a hand injury, able to hang on just shy of midfield. The first down for BYU. The other thing Florida State likes to do is they like to lull you to sleep. Like you just saw them play Georgia Tech, and Georgia Tech had a lot of success moving the ball. A lot of times it's easy to look at that defense and say, oh, they're not that good. Then all of a sudden they'll go out and they'll play somebody like a Florida or a Clemson, and they'll, and they'll dominate. So it's like they, they just kind of they wait for the big game, and then they play their best game defensively. Midfield. Oh Accomplishing the coverage on Jonathan Pittman, who has been quiet tonight. Well, next Thursday night, we have conference games the rest of the way, guys, on Thursday Night Football. We go to Raleigh to see NC State take on Georgia Tech. It starts with college football tonight, presented by Gateway at 7.30 Eastern. Both teams playing on Saturday. Georgia Tech, 1-1 one one now, plays Navy. NC State, 2-0. They take on SMU, and Phillip Rivers has done quite a job. Just under 800 yards passing. 
and eight touchdowns to come from behind win over Indiana on ESPN. A true freshman. His quarterback coach was Norm Chow, who was here for a thousand years. Longtime offensive coordinator at BYU. Now on Chuck Amato's staff at NC State. Peterson's pass complete. Brian McDonald one, Brian in the cross McDonald. midfield. Across you know how hard it is to take a true freshman right now, quarterback. Uh, quarterback. <laughs> true now, not redshirt, and do what that guy's doing, Charles McGee Rivers. That's oh, amazing. That's amazing. And Jeff Smoker up at Michigan State, I thought, yeah, did a nice good job, job last week against Marshall in an experienced defense. And that is a, clearly the toughest position to come in as an 18-year-old and try to deal with these defenses you see today in college football. They had Rivers around at the end of last year. He enrolled in school in January. But still in all, it doesn't doesn't change the whole scope of the thing for no. the on-field adjustments and changes. And you brought up Smoker against that Marshall defense on Saturday. He was looking off receivers, hanging in the pocket, did a very good job for Michigan State. Even if you're a redshirt freshman, it's a tough thing to do. We're going to see a great example. Lee and I go down to Knoxville this weekend. A.J. Suggs is going to have to deal with a lot of pressure. And if Clawson gets in as a true freshman, he's going to have to deal with a lot of pressure because of the way the Gators play defense, and they have experience on that side of the ball. It's very different from high school football. On the other side, they got Rex Grossman, number two quarterback in Florida, who threw three touchdown passes. That kid's only a, a young kid. But, but I think the edge you have to give is the Florida Gators because Jesse Palmer, two years ago, he played at Knoxville. Last year, he played against Florida State. So that's an edge for Florida based on experience with the quarterback. College game day will be in Knoxville. You guys will be down there tomorrow. Join Chris Fowler and then 11 a.m. Eastern on Sunday morning. In the land of the big dog. Can't wait. That'd be great. That'd be terrific. Really awesome. How about another flag? There you go. One just came in. Number 15 on the night on uh, Mississippi State. They'll be on pick trade. The 81st offensive play for BYU tonight. Boy, they are just seeing some snaps in this defense. Pass interference by the defense. Spot foul. First down is the spot of the foul. Another one of the big games on Saturday will be on ABC at 3.30 Eastern. Many of you around the country will see Michigan head out to the Rose Bowl and play UCLA. We have a disagreement here. My friend likes UCLA. I like Michigan. You're giving, you're giving, you're giving the stuff away already. Don't give away the A material. There's yeah. nobody watching. Even, <laughs> even my brother's not watching. Millions of people right there Forget watching. About it. His if, twins are sitting watching if, every second listen, here. If anybody out there at Tennessee is watching, Kirk, Chris, and I, we all love Tennessee. Don't I, I, I always have. Oh. I've never had a problem with Tennessee. Yeah. What do you think about sure we say it again? What do you think about Michigan UCLA 330 Eastern on ABC? My, me personally, I think it's going to be John Navarre has been outstanding his first two games at home, and and you can't take that away. But this is going to be a test similar to what uh, last week Ken Dorsey had to deal with going on the road for the first time, and now John Navarre in the Rose Bowl. UCLA is a talented team. I don't know if many people respect them at this point, but Deshaun Foster and Brian Polly Dixon. I think UCLA is going to pull off an upset. You do not so fast Thursday night style. Where's Without my pencil. pencil. Without my pencil. pencil. I think Anthony <laughs> Thomas wins the game for Michigan running the football. Well, they're going to have to throw because I guarantee you Bob Toledo is going to crowd that line and make Navarre beat him throwing the football. They're not going to beat him just running with Thomas. Here it is, second and ten on the screen. For the freshman, Marcus Reynolds spun off a Morgan hit, and Pick Prather finally pulled him down. That's the 27. Mike, I know you... Uh, you followed Michigan and what they've been able to do a few times. I don't know if you've, had, you've seen them in person, but they're in, in person both times. Impressive looking team, and, and it's just until they go up against a better team, and especially on the road, I think we'll have a better gauge of how good this team really is. You don't know. You know let me tell you the something. competition. The first you know what hurts me with the school? I, I, I love Michigan. I know. You look. Hey, listen they to you. You can't say anything good about Michigan. You're killing Daddy? me. Oh. See, all the, you, you, don't get me going, Lee. Yeah. I love Michigan. I picked okay. Michigan to beat Ohio State. I know you did. I you pick UCLA to beat, beat hey, So what? I pick UCLA because I think they're the better team. If Michigan's the better team. I'll pick them. I, I have no problem with Michigan. Don't start those kind of rumors. I know. I tell you what. I love you the and this. Gators. I don't ever do this. Oh. Have you ever? Have you ever picked the Gators in your what? life? Once I picked them. Over Florida State, ever. Pass to the end zone. Touchdown, Jonathan. 44-27. Flag is down in the end zone. It's all right. It's part of the play. 
Give me a give me a celebration, Will. Come on. You can bring it home. Uh, hats off to Charlie Peterson. He is just taking an all-time pounding tonight and hung in there. Somebody clapped in the end zone. Touchdown, Cam. Unsportsman. After the play was over, there was unsportsman okay. conduct by That's the it. offense. That's 15 yards and on the extra point. New rule this year. You're not allowed to clap if you no, score. Just that's go not straight true. to the sideline. That's not true. No, straight to the sideline. It's side a line. fine line. It's a very you gotta defend it's the officials. Business. It's all business. You got, you got, it's not in this case. It's no serious way. football. It's very serious. Yeah, You've yeah, got to yeah, defend yeah. the officials though, because they are put in such a tough spot when guys started taking off their no. helmets. So if a guy is gonna take off his helmet and get right. in the camera, flag. Okay. But if he just is gonna celebrate with his buddies and get excited, it's not a it's not a penalty. I, I think that's the stupidest rule between that and what's the, what do they call the rule? The, the, the two yards. The halo. The halo. The halo and the celebration rule are the two rules they need to just throw away. Now, if it's going to be an individual taking off his helmet, begging the crowd for attention, then you flag it. But if Peterson's going to throw a touchdown, by the way, he's ended up with a pretty good night tonight. I know he's not going to be happy with the results, but he's ended up with a pretty good night. Hopefully help him with confidence down the road, but here he just looks downfield. Getting more comfortable in the pocket. Finds Pittman in the end zone. Touchdown, Cougars. Well, he's coached a bunch of them. All Americans, freshmen, guys in a tough spot. And Lavelle Edwards, who turns 70 next year, his final season as head coach. He's made BYU QBU. And he just pats Charlie Peterson on the shoulder pads for a heck of a job tonight under this intense heat of the Bulldogs defense. 84 snaps, knocked down probably most of the 50 passes. Onside kick, Tron. The big bounce. It was touched before 10 yards, then went out of bounds. And it will be Mississippi State ball where it went out. Lee, your name's underlined. Why don't you sing happy birthday to Jack? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jake. Happy birthday to you, which happens to be one of Kirk's son's name, too. Ty right? Jake. Jake. And Jimmy Corrigan. Tim, our producer, Mike Schwab, our director, our great crew. Thank you, everyone. Up in the booth, the stat man of all centuries, Marty Aronoff and Joe Bates, who helps us out with our spotting, celebrating a birthday tonight. Happy birthday to Joe as well. Marty's pulling back this year. He's only going to work 350 events. <laughs> <laughs> Jill McDivitt, who's also in our production truck, working graphics tonight. Happy birthday as well. I realize this is such a festive day, Coach. Dante Walker is pulled down. You know, real quickly, there was a, a lot of email, Lee mail and QB mail for both of you, about the patches on the Mississippi State uniforms. And we've uh, sorted that out. I want to get that answer for those of you who've uh, questioned on the Internet. It's the individual majors of the, pl of the players. For example, Kevin Fant, who's now in the game. It was Al from West Virginia, one of the many who asked about those patches on the Mississippi State uniforms. There is one education major there. It's a very nice touch. I like that. You know what? I decided... The guys that don't have them are undecided. No, I'm serious. If they have an undecided major, they don't give them a patch. On the Dante Walker carry. Dick. To the 40-yard line. Sports Center is coming up next with Dan and Linda. They will recap the day. We look forward to our trip to Raleigh next week and a big college football weekend, as always, on ESPN and ESPN2. Two games on ESPN. Good one in the SEC with LSU and Auburn, the Tiger battle. And don't forget the ESPN2 triple header and the scoreboards all day and night as well. Mississippi State plays at South Carolina in nine days. That'll be a good matchup. Fank with an opportunity to throw, and he connects. Donald Lee. Still in the game, the tight end. Fant doesn't get many chances to play or throw, and that'll just about do it for this one. BYU will fall to one and three. Rare air. Lavelle Edwards has only started one and three four times in his 29 seasons. The last time was 1992. But they rallied to finish seven and two, uh, to finish eight and five. 
seven and two in their closing nine ball game. And the Dante Walker run wraps it up. We'll see BYU a couple more times on Thursday Night Football. Lavelle Edwards sayonara season here in Provo. First ever meeting between Jackie Sherrill and Lavelle Edwards goes to Mississippi State. Sports Center next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, the internet leader for college football. For Dr. Punch, Corsa, Herbert, Mike Tirico. Good night. Here's Sports Center.